don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Does anyone know what I'm doing? Who knows? Adjust the mic. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Check the stream. I think we're good. Are we good? Oh, are we good? Yeah, 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 we're good. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B&O stream today on this fine 20 17th. It's the 17th. It's not the 20th. The 17th of July, 2023. I I'm looking at too many ISO standard dates where it's year, month, day. I hope you're having a wonderful week. And we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, yeah, no, I've had lots of stuff happen. Um, and I think, you know what? Let's just dive right into it. Let's just get get the goods out of the way. So, whoop. There we go. Uh, but yeah, no, I've, I've had an interesting week. Actually... When it comes to when it comes to the game playing and all that stuff, uh, it's been I've just been cramming Zelda. I've just been trying to get Zelda out of the way, um, and I will talk about it in as spoiler-free but sort of comprehensively as possible, because I feel like I have a very wide coverage of the game now. Um, compared to when I played before. For reference as well, on the last stream, it was just a grinding stream, basically. We were at the... at the, the Elite Four at the beginning, and I said, I'm not good enough. I fought in Victory Road for a bit, and then I went, yeah, that's a completely original thought, and totally not because it was a chat suggestion. Uh, it was like, yeah, I mean, some of these trainers here will refight you, and, you know, they will level up their own Pokemon to some degree, and they start becoming fairly confident, competent, at, and confident to some degree at fighting you. Uh, and, uh, yeah. These people are not having a good time fighting me again, so we're gonna have to go back and forth a little bit. Uh, but the goal of this stream is, uh, let's get everyone to level 50, which is not too bad. I've already got two to level 50, I've got two at 48, and then, uh... One's at 43, one's at 40. This might take a bit, but I don't think it'll, t it'll take forever. It won't take the whole stream. So the goal is, we should be able to beat the league in this stream. And, if time permits, I'll be able to cram all my bonus stuff in there. Uh, there's not too much bonus stuff, really. Um, at least not compared to the last game. The last game was like, you beat the league, and then it's just like, you got fairly a fairly good amount still still to go. When people say it doubles the length of the game, it's not really quite double in gold and silver, uh, but it's definitely a good solid amount of just like, there is extra stuff all over the place. Uh, I have battle animations turned off. Remind me to turn them back on once we get to the league, because you can't build drama unless you're doing the attack animations. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been a week of, of Zelda. I've been cramming The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, a game that came out um, about two months ago. It came out during my weekly streams of Pokemon Sapphire. So uh, I think I started playing this game right at the beginning of May. And uh, yeah, no, it came out fairly early. I held off for a bit. I've been playing through it. And uh, I guess, yeah, now's as good a time to describe the game. Now, where am I in the game? I have a quest that says destroy Ganondorf. That is a clear indication that that is the last thing left to do in the game. Uh, I've gone around, I've gone and done all the shrines, which are all the little puzzles and things that you do. Um, I have annoyingly got 999 Koroks and I need to consult a map to try and figure out where on earth that last one is because I have no idea. I've been sort of consulting a map um, after I got about 100 hours into the game. Um, just because there's no way, there's no way you're gonna find all of these doodads. What I do praise the game for is how much I managed to get done without needing a map telling me where all the doodads were. So, uh, so some of the other things uh, you can do, um, there's a, a guy who sets up a, a sign for the Hudson Company. Um, there are 81 locations he's in, and he does give you a very minor, uh, but still, you know, he mentions it, uh, thing right when you're done all of them. All 81. But you'll probably find him 30 times. 
unfortunately, yeah, not all those locations are on paths or other things that other places that you normally go to. Uh, it's uh, it's one of those like yeah, the Koroks, the same deal. There are these little tiny like puzzles, um, the very <laughs> puzzle air quotes, um, and uh, the the Korok puzzles effectively uh, fall into two camps. Uh, one is uh, there's a Korok with a backpack, and you have to help him uh, get to his base camp, get to his friend with a base camp, and uh, the puzzle sometimes involves just you know, trying to trek him through uh, some dangerous terrain. Sometimes it's up a hill and you gotta do some smarts. Quite a f bit of the time, but not all the time. I'd say maybe 60% of the time uh, they encourage uh, building stuff. And I'll talk about the building stuff later. Um, even though that has a core mechanic, I've probably mentioned it, but... Uh, those ones are alright. They actually reward you double the Koroks because they're generally a bit more work than the other Korok puzzles, which are all a bit brainless. Uh, I am not even joking, so for reference, um, there are 1,000 Koroks in the game. Uh, that is including the double counted ones, so I think maybe there's more like 950 or something like that. Um, but I guarantee about 200 of the Koroks are there is a nondescript rock sitting on a ledge it's like yeah okay it's, it sort of stands out when you look at it but as if you're gonna spot that that ledge had a rock on it especially when there's plenty of rocks in the game that are on top of mountains that don't count and sometimes they do count it's very hard to know you guess you get the the korok mask as a goodie to find and you can sort of sense them out if you're close but uh, you'd never be that close. You'd never go there to know that there's a Korok there, so there's that. Uh, some of the other puzzles also include, um, they d have like these blocks, kind of, this like Tetris piece shape, you know, like a, like a, a cube, kind of compound cube. It's got a lot of cubes stuck on it to make a shape. And, um, uh, the, uh, you just need to match the pattern somewhere, so either it's like, oh, there's a hole in this cube, or there's a similar shape somewhere to the side, and you gotta copy it. Something like that. Those are fun. They're from the first game. That's pretty alright. I actually really like the puzzles as well, which involve, um, there's a couple of statues under a, uh, like a shack, but the shack has no roof, and so it's your goal to construct a roof out of the nearby components. That's cool. That's cool. Um... Some of these are kind of dumb though. Oh, oh I, I, I did like the ones where it's like there was a plug and you had to provide enough force to yank the plug out. Um, unfortunately, uh, about 15 of those or so was just dip the plug in the water and let it, you know, buoyancy, buoy it back up to the top. So, uh, unfortunately, it's like the problem with all the Koroks is that it will be the same puzzle copy pasted quite a bunch of times. The most egregious one is when there is a um, uh, sort of a stand, basically. Um, it sort of looks like a slingshot. There's like three prongs of sticks and there's a giant boulder nearby. That giant boulder is never in an inconvenient position. It is always like five meters over in one direction and it's weirdly noticeable from a distance. Like once you start looking for them, You'll spot those in, like, bunches of places, but again, they'll be in the middle of nowhere sometimes, and, uh, you know, you'll never walk past this. It's more just like, you know, under the odd chance you'd somehow be here, then yeah, I guess, sure. Um, the Koroks, now, I can't tell you what exactly you get for getting all 1,000, because I'm sitting at 999, so I can't tell you that. Um, but I can tell you that, like, you know, just like Breath of the Wild, you really don't need more than uh, 100 or 150. Uh, even though you can max out your inventory size, it's very diminishing returns for the top ones, and you honestly don't need too much. You know, you don't need your inventory size to be that big. It, it's fairly manageable with like 15 slots as opposed to 20, you know. Um, 
And this leads me into maybe my biggest criticism of Tears of the Kingdom, is that for a game that does copy the, the whole size of the game world of Breath of the Wild, it doesn't exactly fill it with more content. It actually seems to have more empty areas. There are places in Breath of the Wild, um, like the Snowy Mountains and the Gerudo Highlands, and they're just, like, honestly, they're completely unused in this game. They're there, they even put caves and stuff in them, so you can explore them and maybe find some goodies, but honestly, like, I, you know, there were some real interesting, like, world-building puzzles over there in the last game, and now it's just like, it's just the mountains, bro. Quite a bunch of the mountains are sort of like that. They, they, um, put in a fair bit of effort on the Hebra, Hebra, Hebra? The north the northwest one, uh, place near the, the Rito vill village. Oh my gosh, I can talk. Um, <laughs> Uh, but that, uh, they put in a fair bit of stuff over there. There's, like, uh, people chilling about. There's the shield surfers. The Ritos are looking for, um, for stuff over there. Um, Death Mountain... Well, no, that's the same boat, because northeast of Death Mountain is the, uh, old, um... The old tech lab. And the old tech lab... Is an unused building. It, the Yiga clan are there. They, they've got a guy held up in the building, but it's like, wow, what an interesting building that's now just unused. There's nothing really to the building anymore. Um, and there's a fair bit of like mildly disappointing stuff like that. There are some things where it's like they expanded upon it, and I'm, I feel like that's cool, but it is sort of um, disappointing that there is too much like empty space. Uh, even stuff like the, um, the, um, whoops, <laughs> the earthquake. Uh, even stuff like the Great Plateau, the beginning area from the first game, it doesn't exactly, oof, um, it doesn't exactly make any of it that special. There is one, uh, sort of neat thing, um, there is one, like, quest around that area, uh, and I thought that was kind of neat, but, um, it did kind of feel like, you know, hey, yeah, I am retreading the same areas, but, like, I've already done everything. Um, it felt like that in some places. And then in other places, like near the, uh, the Dueling Stables, the Dueling Peaks, which has a stable near it, but, um, actually all the stable stuff as well, all the side quests a lot involved with that, that felt like something new. I was, I was definitely doing something fairly new out of that. Um, so I thought that was, like, fairly cool but yeah then there's just other places where it's just like yeah okay sure like it's just there but no one is like you know there to make that place special uh, I guess that's that's a that's a problem I, I felt Breath of the Wild was consistently making things feel special but then let's see if we can switch out to cast form you got this oh I was getting Onogram out, even though Onogram's potentially going to get wrecked, but... Listen, he's got to... he's got to... Flex his feet somehow. He's got that sword stance, and then he can just slash... Or he could die. One of the two. <laughs> um... Oh, that should be okay. He should be okay. Um... Yeah, yeah... It, it's just a bit weird, given that Tears of the Kingdom, I think, has just as much content, but it does, unfortunately, have empty space by trying to make the world larger. And instead, I think the focus should have been on making the existing world... Sonic Boom! It should have been making the existing world more different. Um, I, th I think that's probably the biggest... Um, Uh, the, the biggest criticism of the game. The second biggest cr criticism. I'm starting more with the the very negative stuff. Um, the second biggest criticism is the performance is a bit on the fence still. Uh, I think it is fine enough, but it definitely has its moments where it's um, it struggles hard. The frame rate is tanking after the resolution has already dipped. I'm glad that Nonogram got one Pokemon in and then couldn't. Take it out. 
The worst part is that it's, it only fails because, uh, like, he can't kill the Magneton, and then he gets very unlucky with, like, being paralyzed, being confused. And when he's confused, it's, it's so detrimental. So perhaps Cast Form is actually the sweeper I need. Yeah, this Elite Four is going to be kind of weird, but... Well, there's another one that hit level 50, and someone's about to hit level 50, like the 49, and they weren't too far off. Uh, but yeah, no, performance being a bit iffy, it's like, you know, I expect it from console games in general. Uh, yeah, he's right there, like one or two Pokemon away. Um, Ninjask is... I think Ninjask also needs to get to 120, yeah. 125, so he might be a bit, but also we'll just share that experience, and then we'll dump some rare candies into people. Maybe he needs all of them. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I I don't expect the performance to be perfect, although it's highly desirable. But yeah, it, it you feel it, you feel it in places. Um, could be better with the Switch too, maybe, but. Yeah, at the end of the day, um, the game is very ambitious, and it does meet that ambition quite a lot. Like, I am genuinely impressed at how the only times I really had the game, like, stall on me for, like, loading was when I would enter the undergrounds. And not all the time, but there are some times when it's just like, yeah, I'm going fairly quickly between the sections. And it was just like, hold on, yeah, wait, underground. Because the underground does have a fair bit of geometry to load it. Um, I just always think that when that person said tomorrow, they meant really tomorrow and not, uh, what do we look up? Once every 512 steps or 256? It's pretty quick. Um, yeah, the... Yeah, the performance, it's a bit chonky. Uh... But then, yeah, we get into all the goods of the game. I really, really enjoyed how um, how much of the content is fairly well laid out. Um, unlike Breath of the Wild, I think by the end of the game, I realized that all of the main quest was required. Now, I can't exactly tell you how. And perhaps someone will say, actually, yeah, you can just walk to Ganondorf right away. So I, I'm not too sure what exactly happens when you have and haven't. Uh, Fort Ganondorf, but the game makes it fairly clear, hey, you know, you gotta go over to the four corners of the map, help out someone, do a dungeon. Sure, okay. Uh, what I wasn't expecting was a little more, um, you know, meat and bones on the extra locations of the games, and whether, like, some of it was still side content, or whether it was like, hey, you know, like, this was, uh, as they refer to a side adventure, and these were the more major and serious kinds of side quests. Not like serious as in like, like the subject matter is, is serious, but just like, um, serious as in, uh, the, oh. no. There's so much confusion. There's so many Pokemon that can like confuse in this game. I don't recall it being anywhere near that bad. So dang, Sedimento is just going to get a bunch of passive experience. Just get him with the old Weather Ball. Oh, he's, trying to, he's trying to get the goods on me. Um, but yeah, I, I do really enjoy where... Um, yeah, where the game, you know, led you, what kinds of things it would mention. Oh, there's, there's Tropius. Well, let's get Nonogram out, I guess. Um, you're knocking me off. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's it's very good at, at pointing you in, in where you need to go. Sometimes it's like, yeah, okay, it just kind of does it with dialogue. Sometimes it's really, really painfully obvious. Like, they'll say something and they'll wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say something in red text. Like, it'll be like, you know, oh, you know, like, 
this would be great for, you know, us to explore. But unfortunately, we don't have wings. We can't get that high up. If only there was a way to get very high up. Maybe if I could climb onto that neighboring mountain, then I could use my paraglider and maybe fly high up. But alas, I don't have a paraglider, and therefore I am unable to do that. If only I knew someone who could recreate the steps that I am exactly detailing. There's a lot of dialogue, it's exactly like that, and it's like, yeah, okay game, I get it. Um, I think it's more handholdy than Breath of the Wild, and not just in terms of like, oh, you know, like, I've played the game before, well, not this game before, but like, I understand the mechanics more. I think there's enough differences, um, for example, it doesn't use uh, arrows, for example. You still have arrows, you still have your bow, bow and arrow, but um, a big difference is now you don't have uh, different elements of arrows. You actually have, um, or you can effectively combine any item as an arrow. So bombs are now just you use an arrow with a bomb, and uh, fire arrows is like you just use, uh, you know, you use whatever. Um, use a, a fire fruit, a fire plant, um, there's ice flowers, there's stuff like that. So all your elements are effectively covered by the different uh, things that you have. Um, and this mechanic is actually really nicely well integrated into the, everything. Like not only is it like, yeah, you know, you, you can combine that with your arrows, you can combine it with your weapons. And combining it with your weapons means that you, uh, you know, you gain some abilities of that thing that you fuse. Sometimes the thing you fuse... Oh my gosh. Okay. Pepperoni is just gonna be the one. Um, sometimes the thing you fuse is just fairly physical. It might be to like, oh, like, you know, you're fusing a tree log or a leaf and you'll kind of get, you know, the tree log turns into more of a mallet, the leaf turns into a fan. Like, sure, there's stuff like that. Um, but then there's, uh, like, you know, you'll you'll get later in the game. I especially found this, um, like playthrough firsthand. Uh, all the enemies mostly drop horns, and the horns will be of different kind of tiers depending on how tough the enemy is. And later in the game, the enemies actually start to scale on you, and it's just like, yeah, by by the end point of the game, it's like all the enemies are the high tier enemies. I I had this like one uh, moment where it's like um, you find like a boss. Bokoblin. Boss Moblin? I forgot the... Uh, the boss kind of enemy. Like a big tubby dude. And it'd be followed by like five little guys. I remember early in the game it's like, you know, he might be red and then like maybe there's like one blue guy following him. Uh, black is the next rank above and then there's the silver ones which are the hardest ones. I'm now at that point where it's like, okay, it's a silver boss and five silver dudes following him. Like, that, that's gonna be a gnarly fight. Um... And, uh, yeah, you're gonna need to figure out how exactly do I handle, how do I, how do I, you know, deal with the scaling? And the answer is, uh, it's the boss, or it's the monster horns that will give you the edge you need. Because all the weapons suck in the game. That is a by design thing, they made all the weapons be like, oh, they've all deteriorated, so they all, you know, don't do very much damage. Um, but it's your, you know, your goal, you can fuse things onto it and then you get stuff like that. Um, there are also elemental, like, lizzle foes or other kinds of, uh, things that you can fuse on. And, uh, you can grant your weapons elemental properties. And I really like how this is all integrated into everything. Different elements will do different things against different enemies. Um, the, there'll be some puzzles where it's like having an elemental weapon just saves a fair bit of time. Um, oh. Yeah, ha having an elemental weapon saves a bit of time. You can always do the classic thing of uh, when, um, you know, when you're in a snowy environment, you can hold a fire weapon and you'll at least save yourself the hassle of, you know, maybe it's not cold enough now. Something like that. Um, yeah, that, that kind of stuff is cool. Um, and, it, you know, it's in, it's in the first game, as in that's what the elementals do, but... Uh, the ability to just, like, you're holding on to all these resources, you have a fair bit more control over it. Um, it can be preference which one you prefer, but I definitely say both of them work. Both of them make sense. Um, I also think that the cooking is a fair bit more um, tied into all the quests and stuff. It definitely was a nice mechanic in the previous game, but now it's like, 
yeah, no, like, 30% of the people will talk about cooking, and they'll talk about all the interesting things that you can do with it, and then someone will mention things in, like, there was one thing where, uh, you could buy, um, like, monster extract from one store, but it's like, well, what does it do? There's another person in another quest who talks about, oh, who, who helps, uh, is, they're like, oh, you need to deliver me this kind of meal. And then they take the meal, they spray their magical extract on it, and suddenly it comes out way better. And you're like, whoa. And then they say, maybe I should head over to the town in the northeast to, to stock up on my supplies, like that kind of stuff. And it's like, that's two halves of a full story. And I really like how they'll drip feed all this information. You'll go to, um, you know, stables and they'll have signs just showing a recipe. Just one. But, you know, you, you, you can you can start to piece together all these cool little uh, recipes and things like that um, that, uh, you know, that you can cook up. Uh, are they all necessary? I don't think it's really necessary to cook them all up. Someone, you know, might say, hey, maybe there's something if you actually manage to deck out the, uh, the recipe list. But uh, at least for me, it's like, you know, the things that you think work, work a fair bit. And, uh, yeah. You might need, um, uh, the thing I'll lean into is the underground. The underground is a little barren. It's got things to do. Like, it, there's, there's lots of boss enemies in there, um, and there's a good number of, like, uh, Yiga hideouts, which will allow you to find, uh, schematics that you can use for, um, uh, the, there's a, there's a, there's a thing you get schematics for. Let's just say that. Um, but unfortunately nothing exactly, like, links to all these places, and then, like, the schematics are only as useful as you think they are. Like, I'm not gonna go building stuff. It's very hard to build stuff into combat. That's the problem I have. It, uh, it, there's not a lot of opportunity for me to build things and then right into combat, so, um, they work well in puzzles. But when the, you know, when the material is, or when the, the schematic is like, here is a thing that, like, helps you. I didn't change the, I've still got sedimenta with the experience share. I've just been, like, blanked out right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, and I still gotta find another four dudes. Um. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of that. Um. Anything else that I haven't mentioned? The boss enemies are good fun. I do really enjoy them. They're, uh, they're all great fun to fight. Uh, I especially love how they get really hard. The, the Gleox, the three-headed dragons, um, very, very difficult. And I like how, um, you know, like how all of these enemies sort of involve different, different approaches. And sometimes they'll have these, like, fun twists on them. So the Gleox are all fairly normal, there's nothing really too much with it, but they'll, they'll be different elemental type Gleox, and uh, you'll basically have to go, okay, well when I go next to the fire Gleox, uh, it's now hotter, and also he's throwing fireballs at me. When I go to the, um, to the uh, ice Gleox, it's now cold, or something like that. Um, that kind of stuff makes sense, but then, like, uh, they all also have, uh, they'll fly up into the air, and they all have a different way of going up into the air and trying to deal that final hit back to the, back to the, uh, the Gleok. So that's cool. I like how the, the Hynixes have, like, shin pads, but, it, like, very random which shin pad they're actually wearing, so I'll go up to them and suddenly I'm just, I'm slashing on the wrong side. They got shin pads on both knees sometimes, so... Uh, you're then gonna go, okay, well, I gotta knock them over or stuff like that. Uh, the taluses, those little stone, um, stone structure things, sometimes there's, uh, you know, enemies riding it. That's pretty cool. Uh, but even then, it's like, it can be of different elements, and then on top of that, the, the little rock wart that it's got that you're supposed to hit, that can be in very different places, and sometimes it's actually in very inconvenient places if you're trying to stand on him. So it's like, your goal is more to poke him with a long stick because it's too high to stand on top and too low to... Sorry. 
it's it's too high to to reach with a short weapon and too low to reach um, with a or if you're standing on top of them, stuff like that. Um, so that's good fun. Um, there is an in-game counter as to how many I've gotten, and I'm like, I'm curious what the reward for getting all of them is. Uh, the one that I can say, I do know what you get, is the Muldugas. Uh, the Sandworms, I'm pretty sure they were in the- yeah, they were in Breath of the Wild. Um, there's not that many of them, there's only like four. Like, just locations. You can refight any of these, but there's only four locations for them, because they're only gonna appear in the sandy place. Um, so, uh, the reward is... Yeah, okay, yeah, it's, it acknowledges you did it, so maybe that's what it's going to be for all of them, but, uh... What else, what else, what else? There's a good number of minigames as well. Uh, the building mechanic, yeah, for puzzles or even, like, you know, for these more adventuring things, like you'd, you'd fly around or you'd try and get somewhere with a, with a plane or maybe you'd craft a, a, a car effectively. They all work actually really nicely. I like how when you put a steering stick on um, uh, a construct, it's like your steering stick becomes the center of rotation. And uh, and it makes a lot of sense. A lot of the, like, just driving a thing, it's like, it makes sense because it's rotating around you and not like some like actual, you know, axis of rotation. It doesn't make as much sense of like, actually being a car, but it is like, yeah, you know, it works and it's easy to pick up. Um, also a lot of them have reverse gears, stuff like that. That steering stick works wonders, but I, I especially love that as you go through different areas of the game, they'll lean towards different, of, uh, different construct parts. Um, so at the beginning of the game, I didn't even have the stick. I was just like, I know it probably shows up, but uh, you know, I couldn't build, I couldn't steer anything. So it was like, here's a car, and I'm just gonna launch it forward, or here's a plane, and I'm just gonna like stand on its uh, wings to lean it over in the directions I need it to, um, stuff like that. Uh, or you'd be solving stuff with fans, but they'd be fairly, fairly basic, uh, where it's like more, I'm trying to push a boat in that direction. Um, but yeah, they get more and more extravagant as you learn about all the tools and you start getting the resources for all the tools. Um, so I, I, I did kind of like how that how that worked. Um, yeah, yeah, only catch is you can't build stuff into battle. Um, but I'd say it works really well. Um, my only problem is uh, when I'm rotating something right, I don't know if that means clockwise or anti-clockwise to me. Like, which side am I rotating to the right? Up and down makes sense. I'm like tilting it forward, forward or backward. But rotating right, uh, sometimes it's like right. I don't know. I get it mixed up in my head. I'm always rotating things in the wrong direction, and it sometimes gets, uh, you know, the worst of me when it's like, oh, I'm holding a fire bar and I just rotate it into me. It happens. Uh, there's gyro controls for the um, holding stuff, but it's not as fancy as a uh, magnesis in the uh, previous game was because there's no like momentum on waving things around uh, mostly because they don't want you just constantly taking a box and slapping it onto an enemy uh, that seemed to be the premier strat for breath of the wild to get through the game without actually using resources um, this game kind of forces you to use your resources but it also gives you a plentiful amount of things um, i never felt like i was really that caught out what i could say is gone I lost my good weapons um, but I was never in that point where like I'd have stuff that's trash it's more that like okay I've just got to get a bit better and start minimizing my losses um, same thing with the armor you can upgrade your armor in the same way as Breath of the Wild but um, yeah after like two upgrades you don't feel like you particularly are that vulnerable I think maybe there's gonna be something wonderful if I can fully upgrade all my armor or at least like an armor set um, but different armor sets, like the last game, they, they have their different um, uses and, uh, you know, different utilities. Um, and I guess, it, you know, it sometimes depends on your, uh, on your, uh, your playstyle, let's say that. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess ultimately at the end of the day, uh, oh yeah, the dungeons. The dungeons are great. The dungeons are actually good fun. Um, 
my only... <laughs> this is starting to get into, like, what did I do at the beginning of the game? <laughs> Um, but the dungeons are good fun. Uh, my only gripe with the dungeons is that, uh, one, I went to the, um, the first, the Telegraph first dungeon, which is the one near the Rito village. Uh, I went to the dungeon without actually getting the, uh, companion who is supposed to guide you up there. Um, and it basically meant when I got up to the very top, uh, I pressed on the panel and the panel was like, bruh, bruh, you're not supposed to be here. Um, except that was the first time I saw that indicator and I thought, oh, am I doing something wrong? I explored around a bit more and it's like, yeah, I wasn't too sure, like, what I'm doing here. Uh, I came back three hours later with the companion going, oh, this makes a lot of sense, but... Yeah, I thought I could take on the dungeon, but no, you need the AI companion. The game just doesn't know what to do when you don't have the AI companion. And instead of making it physically impossible for me to even get there without the AI companion, they had to just kind of tell me, no, nah, sorry man, just come back later. Um, so there's a bit of that, there's a bit, bit of that which takes you out a little bit. Um, but the dungeons themselves are good fun, they all theme themselves around um, some kind of mechanic, and that mechanic is actually not really used anywhere else, so I really like that. Um, and they all feel somewhat a little bit different, a little bit, like, the journey to getting to the dungeon always feels arguably more meaningful than the dungeon itself but i love how like how wide and how how large the structures all felt because of that um even like you'd see them and then for like ages and then it's like so how does this make sense where do i get how do i get to this and suddenly it's like ah okay here's where it all goes but um yeah you're doing all these like fun kind of quests and things beforehand um, and, uh, yeah, no, it's, it, it works out. It, it's, it's fairly neat. I, I really enjoy it. Um, gosh, I have nothing good against this Max Thomas castle. Yeah, that's I can say is he gets frozen. There we go. Uh, yeah, the dungeons are good. The voice acting is trash. Can I, can I say that? Like, the, uh, strike number three. The voice acting is really bad. It's, uh, it could be so much better, um, but it's, it's just like, oh, Goro, uh, I, I'm so timid and, and something like that. And it's like, oh my goodness, bro. Like, I mean, I know, I know he's doing the voice, but like, yeah, it's just like, these people don't act like they're really in the world, they're just kind of doing a voice. So I, I'll just put it like that. It, it's a clear, just like, you're doing a voice. Um, I think one thing that always gets me is the inconsistency of what kind of accent people are using. Um, you can make the case of like, oh, well maybe like... You know, they're in different regions, so maybe they do have different accents, but it's like, no, like, there's people in the same region where it's like, some people will have American accents and some people will have British accents. Um, the Gerudo town, I'm very certain, has a couple of people who are like that, and it's just like, oh, okay, sure. Um, like, yeah, they, I, I'm not too sure if they really had any guidance on, on that one. Maybe it's better in, in Japanese, maybe that's... That's the thing. I actually, I remember playing Breath of the Wild in, with a German voice acting on. Um, there's only a little bit of voice acting in both of these games. There's not a ton. But you'll get to the cutscenes and then it's just like, yeah, okay, like, sure. Um, I will still rip into the cutscenes, by the way. Uh, there's a quest early on where it's basically like there's these murals around uh, the whole game. And you basically go over to the eye of the mural, and uh, or the teardrop of the mural, and that's the Tears of the Kingdom. That's the thing that you're, uh, finding, I guess? Sure. I never found the Breath of the Wild, but, yeah, okay. Um, but, uh, the, uh, the, the murals, you would play them out of order. It's basically like, you know, the one that you find gives you a certain you know, cutscene. And my problem was the second one I found spoiled the entire story of what, you know, what was going on. Um, and, you know, 
to you as a player, maybe you're not going to find it, but to me, I just saw that and it started flashbanking to the other cutscenes I hadn't seen yet. But I, it was it was painfully obvious it was just flashbacking to those other cutscenes. And I was like, hey, you know what? Like, I now know exactly what's going to happen. And I'm just watching the other cutscenes going, yep, no, yep, that's, that's why, that's, yep, yep. Like, you're just explaining the thing that I know you're going to end up at. Um, I think it would probably be a bit better if, uh, Maybe, because they end with a cutscene. There is one final cutscene after you've gotten all the other ones. They could have done a better, you know, wrap up all the other cutscenes with that last one and then had all the other bits be these pieces of information. Instead, it's like half of them are pieces of information. Half of them are like the actual story of things happening. Um... So I think they need to do a little better in terms of that non-linear storytelling, which is weird because I don't remember it being that bad in Breath of the Wild, and I'm very certain Breath of the Wild had a similar thing going on. Um, but sure, okay, sure, sure. Uh, anything else? Music's great. The music is really, really good. I like the new uh, the new themes of music. The Gleok theme. I, I mentioned the Gleok enemy before, uh, but when you're fighting a Gleok, he's got this great song where it's like, he's got three heads, so what's the song gonna do? It's it's all in triplets, but it builds up into these, like, dramatic moments. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's really good. Really good. Um, I might rip into the main bosses, they're a little bit forgettable. Um, even if you can refight versions of them in the underground, and not just, like, as like a special mode, but it's like, no, they're, they're just like regular bosses when you stumble upon them if you want. Um, what's up, Mr. Crypt? Uh, yeah, no, at the end of the day, uh, I can't think of anything else in Tears of the Kingdom to really comment on. Um, so I think the best I would, like, the only things I've really got left to do is like, well, what's your reward for actually, uh, you sent help? Oh my gosh, I got the help. Where's the help? <laughs> um... We're nearly there. Nearly there on the grind fest, so... I don't think it should take too much longer. Um... I've got four Pokemon at level 50. We're just getting cast form and, uh... And, uh... Ninjask up and then we're all good. Wait, Spain people in EU4? I hate... <laughs> I hate the Spaniards! <laughs> like, uh, good old EU4. It's been forever since I played Europe Universe House. But yeah, no, it's so irritating, like, whenever someone just, like, steps on you, like, ah, not again. From Alaska to Argentina. As in Spain are all over there? Oof. Done. Done, Spaniards. Can't believe... I can't believe where you're going. Um, <laughs> I, will, I will give you, I will give you my help and support. I don't know like how to actually like deal with anything you're up universals. I don't, I'd usually get like my butt kicked. Um, they bullied UK and France from New World. Oof. Who are you playing as? Like where are you kind of situated right now? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you observe it. Uh, yeah, no, Tears of the Kingdom, it's a, it's a great game. I still really enjoy it, and, I mean, I'm still sadistic enough to have gone after all the Koroks and things. Um, even after I was sadistic enough to do it in the last game. Uh, oh, you're, oh, as in you're not, you're just watching, you're watching them do it. Alright. Uh... Yeah, no, it's 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 a great game. Uh, is it currently, I guess, people's games of the year 2023? Um, perhaps. I can't really. I gotta. I gotta write down what. Um, you saw the mod to make colonization more historical, and yet Spain got to Alaska. <laughs> that is. That is. I mean, maybe that is historical in some. You know, some universe. But yeah, yeah, no, Tears of the Kingdom, I'm enjoying it. Spain was first. And 
uh, when UK time finally come. Let's get that hairy mama. Woof. Yeah, uh, Tears of the Kingdom is, uh, perhaps a, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try and start getting through my Switch library. I, uh, like, the Castellia or Mexico had 100,000 troops. One million troops, well, not one million, but close. <laughs> one factor off. One order of magnitude, rather, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's the, uh, the phrase. Uh, and mainland Spain, 300%. Well, in that case, in that case, they're stuffed if, you know, you just send all your dudes over. He's got the mightiest of Inas. Good news for you, you're gonna be Persian. Hey! I like the Persians. making great carpets. <laughs> That's like such like a generic thing to say, but you know, like legit, legit. I always love that. Like whenever like cultures have like a super duper iconic, like piece of, you know, heritage that they'll like continue to craft on. It's like that. That's cool. I love, you know, like we, we, we always, we always joke about like Persian rugs and stuff like that, but oh my gosh, I'm going to hit with thunder at some point. Um, there we go. Um, obviously magically transform into an Australian Arab. <laughs> We're getting out of money. That's the song. I've got an Arabic friend. I, I hope he appreciates this. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'm hoping that Tears of the Kingdom encourages me to get to the rest of my Switch library. I unfortunately put down Pokemon Scarlet. I never actually finished it, but I got, like, decently far through it. Um, but yeah, I just didn't really feel that bothered to play through it really all the way through. Is that sacrilege saying, oh, like, it, it has a Pokemon game and I just, like, never beat it? It wasn't even because of, like, grinding or anything, it was just like, hey, you know, like, I've sort of been there, done that with Pokemon, um, like, before. It's weird, though, because, like, I played Sword, um, in, uh, 20, uh, 19. I'm very certain I played it then, right at the end of 2019, because the DLC wasn't out. I thought of buying Gen 9 and saw the game. It's not like, I'm also, like, I'm, I didn't find it was that bad. It is like, yeah, okay, the performance is, you know, shocking. It has a lot of crust to it all, yes. But it is also a game that doesn't demand that the performance is running well for you to play it well. And I'm a bit more accepting of the games that, you know, that are in that state. If it's a game where I really need reaction speed and stuff, I'm gonna get very upset when things start running very slowly or things start, you know, feeling like I've got terrible input latency. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't have an electric attack. Oh, it's got spark, doesn't it? Well, I don't know why it doesn't come out. Because I was just thinking like, yeah, I've got weather ball. Shiny Hunter, when he saw shiny Pokemon on the wall, he's in the wall. I get through the, the magneton a bit faster, but I gotta hope I don't get hit. Ah, just like <laughs> charred my toe on the desk. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I hope I play through more Switch games. I recently picked up Xenoblade 2. I think I mentioned it before, but uh, yeah, no, I like I was struggling to find a physical copy of that forever, and now I finally got one, and now it's like, yep, 
I need to play it. Uh, I have played Xenoblade 1 out of one very few of the RPGs I've played before. Uh, and uh, I have indeed played Xenoblade X on the Wii U. And uh, I've read Gangster until Rain starts speak for it. Um, I have played Xenoblade X, and Xenoblade X is, um, it's, it's a, it's a, I'll say it's a grind fest, that is not necessarily to say that, like, it's a grindy game, but that the whole kind of point of the game is to, you know, bump up numbers, um, and then eventually you get into, like, these, like, late game raid bosses. I like how paralysis didn't mean anything just then, um, Sure, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you get into these, like, kind of late-game raids. I don't know, like, when... If people are gonna say, like, oh, the entire Xenoblade franchise except for X is on the Switch, I, I would somewhat say X doesn't, you know, demand to be played. I always still like, you know, having these games constantly being playable on whatever system you have. I, I don't like the idea of, like, games not being playable anymore. Uh, it would be super ideal if your games are always transferable onto newer hardware, even though I know architectures change, uh, controllers change, which makes all Wii U and Wii games uh, non-trivial to just directly port. Um, did I just heal? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, do you buy water or drink it from the tap? Uh, well, I do, I do both, but I do indeed buy, like, um, spring water a bunch. Um, I think there's, I don't know, like, uh, this, the taste is a bit better. Uh, I know you could say, like, isn't that a, a very bourgeois thing to, like, buy bottled water? And I'm like, yeah, but it is also, like, you get, like, 15 liters of water for, like, 10 bucks. So, like, I guess it is a bit, but I'm not drinking it a ton. I don't know. If I mention microplastics, maybe that- nah, I don't know. I- I don't have- I know that- I got like some mates who are just like, actually, um... They- they are concerned about like, you know, chemicals in the water. Not necessarily as like a conspiratorial thing, but like they legitimately think like, it's not as healthy for them to be constantly drinking, uh, tap water. You don't- you don't pay for tap water, right? Well, I mean, I guess- Everyone pays for tap water, but you know what I mean? It's like you're not like... Oh, you like the taste of tap water, though. We got good tap water, though. It's not that bad. Like, it's really good in Sydney. Um, sometimes it depends on your pipes. That's that's another thing. Like, I've been in places where it's like they got hideous pipes, and it comes out, and it's like slightly brown. I'm like, ugh. But it's like... Then I, someone who lives down the road, it's like, oh, it comes out fine. Like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> I think there's just something in the taps. Uh, I've been to some places where it's like the tap water is actually like board water. And, uh, I've, I know a lot of people who are just like, they don't like board water. I live in South Ural. Da, 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 get the Google Maps. South Ural. South Ural, where is that? I don't know why it just came up with the Royal Agricultural Society of UNSW. Sorry, of, of NSW, not UNSW. South Ural. It just keeps coming up with... Like... That place. Tap water is better than bottled. I guess it also depends on your bottled water. Um... I'm not like... I'm not that picky. I used to be like... I keep mentioning the Mount Franklin sponsorship. Uh, but then Mount Franklin stopped... You know, selling bottled water at my supermarket, and I was like, oh, okay. I just bought the Coles, like, cheaper stuff, but the Coles cheaper stuff sort of tastes the same. The only catch is that I am not very strong, and I gotta carry that 15 liters of water, whereas the Mount Franklin ones came in smaller, you know, 20 bottle packages. It was a little more maintainable. Um, that's my only catch. Um, unless we don't live, live in Astrakhan. Yeah, I guess. The places where they don't get water, they're like... I mean, I know I know it's like... Also, finally, by the way, here's move number umpteen. <laughs> Level 45, 
We finally get Baton Pass. This is the whole, the whole magic of, of Ninjask. Is that I actually just want him to set up, mostly. <laughs> He'll learn Baton Pass, and what this does is that it switches out the user while keeping effects in play, as in his speed ups every turn say, and him using Sword Stance but say. Technically Double Team would also say, but I'm like, eh, it's kind of overkill if I'm going to be doing Double Team as well. Um, so he's going to have two moves, he's going to have uh, Slashing and Shadow Ball as, you know, moves he can use, because he still needs to be able to attack, and he's actually fairly decent at that. But his main goal is maybe to just, like, go in, use Sword Stance, live one turn, and then move over to Armaldo or Swamper, and now it's like they both have one speed up and two attack up after one turn. And given Ninjask is probably going to go first every time, as long as he can survive one hit, you can then start to, you know, snowball a fair bit. And that's the magic. That's the magic of what I want to do. He doesn't actually need to do much. Uh, he, I, I might get him to do something in the in the battle, but yeah, just being that one turn. That's all he needs to be. Imagine living on a river. Living on a river where you fish IMG for the whole country and your drinking water is bad. Yeah, oh, legit. I mean, like, you know, river water isn't necessarily like that clean all the time, um, but yeah, like, yeah, it's just like, you know, we, we, fig we figured out, like, water filtration and all that stuff, and then it's just like, yeah, but it takes a while, so someone's got to do it for you, and then, like, when no one does this, like, eh. or, or when water is, like, so direct, like, if anything, like, I, I, I always have a certain degree of, like, you know, Let's try and reduce our reliances on things. It brown... well, when it's brown, yeah. Like, there's things I don't want to rely on, like, uh, when people are like, Oh, you know, like, I hate Twitter, I'm moving to threads. I know I, I'm just talking about bottled water and suddenly I'm like, social media! But, like, trust me, I'll get there. Um, like, in general, if there's a reliance that you don't actually need, like, why exactly do we have to log in with Instagram and all that stuff and also not be federated and all this jazz um you know there's a certain reliance where it's like i'm relying on the site to be okay and trustworthy and not like harvest my personal data for ai models which they totally do it's just it's just, it's just that's just how it is like okay um there we go. cast form is two levels away ninjaska is getting there so we should be good for having a crack at the league soon it's getting soon The best part, I can probably take off the, um, uh, the experience share and then I'll uh, just get double experience on Ninjas. If he can take out people. He's a few levels higher, it might be a bit easier now. Um, but yeah, yeah, like, I'm generally of the impression, you know, the more, the less reliance the better. But some reliance is 100% necessary. There are some things that I'm just like, you know, I do not have the knowledge to do, like, sewage like legit like sewage is such like a like a given and then there's some places and they just like you know you know you, you poop like no one knows where that goes here it's like someone knows where that poop's gonna go and they get the heck out of where i'm really you know came back to pce for world looks even worse it's not all spain is it It's all Spain. <laughs> Listen, who's conquered Australia yet? That's what I want to know. So, yeah. Get all, get all threads. Is anyone using threads? And if so, why? Like. Threads is a bit of a weird one for me because it's, uh, I don't quite understand why people, I mean, I don't use Instagram as well, so maybe that's my gist is that I, <laughs> I have a, a deep fear about data harvesting on Facebook. UK is trying. They're trying, they're trying. I have a deep kind of fear about like data harvesting and stuff on the internet. Uh, 
getting beaten by locals. <laughs> I mean, that's just what happens in real life. Like, you know. <laughs> Your mod's getting very historically accurate right now. Uh, but yeah, I, like, I don't exactly trust uh, threads to be very safe with my data. I feel like there's a lot of, you know, all, all, a lot of big tech companies are just like, yeah, like, like, I found that Discord, Discord has in their privacy policy that, like, you have to request for them to remove data, and then they'll tell you all the data that they have collected, but, like, you know, they're, they're, I'm very certain there is information they are not reporting, like, they don't seem to, or, or they tell you information, but it's, like, completely encoded in, like, their own, like, business language. Like, I don't know what these numbers mean, but they totally do. But, like, it's associated to me, so it's like, okay. Imagine having a uh, gun against Rock. Rock is winning. Listen, with enough numbers and enough trebuchets, catapults, Rock always wins. I've yet to meet a man who can outsmart Rock. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know a ton about threads, but it does kind of seem like function-wise exactly like Twitter. And, you know, like that is kind of what people were expecting. And I, I actually, I, I kind of admire like these big tech companies when they announce and develop a feature in such short time. Like, I don't imagine threads was really like, you know, in development for more than a year. But it's like, you know, what it's capable of. Spanish Indonesia, Spanish Canada. What do the Spanish not have? They haven't claimed Fiji. Think about it. <laughs> how many how many how many countries still have a Union Jack? On US getting rid of the Union Jack. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going on that one. Uh, yeah, I guess the thing with threads um, is that it, I, like all social medias, it needs to rely on its user base in Spanish New York. Oh, well. Wasn't that the Dutch originally? Who had New York? Like that whole eastern side of the US? very Dutch. Um, but yeah, no, I don't trust... Sorry. Where, where I go? Discord sends a lot of information, even when you opt out of the sending of social... In of, of personalized information. I think it's that they don't use it. I think that's where they say in the terms and conditions, but it's like, bro, just s stop sending information. Just, just please stop sending information, Discord. So, it's crazy sus. Like, there's a, um, there's a certain endpoint. I wish, if I could, like, filter that endpoint from my computer and go anytime, you know, Discord tries to hit that endpoint, just, just redirect, just don't. I want to, I want to just get that. I want to just get that. Um, so, with threads, I mean, obviously, if it's a Facebook thing, I think there's a lot of data involved, and ultimately, like, you know, it could be just for advertising. Maybe. But given that Facebook clearly does a lot of AI stuff, um, you know, I'm not that comfortable with, like, hey, you know, Facebook's making an AI model, and then I don't get to be a part of it in any way. That's Facebook's secret source. And I'm a part of it. Once it was New Amsterdam, then New York, and now it's New Madrid. They can't... They <laughs> can't get that mind. They gotta pick a lane. What are they making New Brisbane? Donk City. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, people will use social media. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Are we, are we so, sort of social engineered into using social media all the time now? Like, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't, you know, anonymously browse Twitter and I still browse Fediverse things and I still have group chats and various places, like, I'm not immune to it, I guess, but, but 
I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't see the appeal of threads because there are certain, like, it's the community that really drives Twitter and, and, and now threads. Uh, but, like, the feature, I think the features are okay, but people should really be t treating it as what it originally was, which is microblogging. I, I don't like the short 140 characters. I really like um, the Fediverse's, uh, well, some Mastodon instances, it's 500, but legit, I like the, the 5,000 limit. I know 5,000 is a ton, but it's like, it's microblogging. You're allowed to say a bit more. A bit more than you usually do. Um, but yeah, like, you know, make, make like your piece, you know, well stated, well understood. Um, and then uh, I guess, yeah, you can sort of treat it like it's a, uh, you know, like it's a forum at some point. Like just, just seamlessly it thinks itself like a, th a forum. I don't know. Uh, yeah, like, I don't think that... I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm, I'm rambling, I'm rambling. Do you ever just sometimes, like, not have a point? That's that's me, like, 50% of the time. And the other 40% 40 40 of that remaining 50% is, like, me just beatboxing, so... The point is, is, like... It's purely the pastime. I found out, um, I keep mentioning King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Can't be Australian unless I listen to King Giz, but, uh, they got, um, uh, they had a live album released at the beginning of the year. Now, I'm not too sure if it's, uh, like, fully official or not. I think it's official, but it's on their Spotify, or a Spotify called Gizzard Bootlegs. And so I'm like, I don't know, is, is this legit? Who knows? But they got a, they got a, um, a live album at the, well, recorded at the end of last year, three nights at one location, uh, released at the beginning of this year, and I'm like, oh boy, it's eight and a half hours, like, that is a long collection of songs. But that's also like, yeah, I mean, they have, they have that much music, like, I don't think they're repeating. I think. If they are, then I'll catch them out, but, uh, like, I, I, I've, I really like, um, the, the King Crimson Two Kings. Um, I really like the, uh, the Great Deceiver box set, um, which is like four CDs long of, uh, um, all these, like, live concerts. Um, not full concerts, but definitely, like, fair bits of them, uh, from 1973 and 74. Um, and it's a, it's a long listen, uh, but it's, it's so good at capturing that essence of like what the band was at that time which was full of like improv full of like you know transforming these existing songs full of using thunder three times and missing i mean the odds are uh, are really like you know after two times it's a bit of like yeah sure three times i'm like mm, i'm in the unlucky territory now but you know, it happens it happens uh i think five times now i haven't hit Oh, no, we missed again. And then uh, it's been protected. But that's okay, I'll just hit myself anyways. And now the thunder hits. <laughs> what was that, eight users? That was a pretty high number of users, wasn't it? Yeah, but uh, but, yeah, no, it's eight and a half hours. It's, uh, that's a long listen, so, um, I'm also, like, I'm a bit more of a recent Kingers, but I listened to, um, uh, uh, Brunswick East. I listened to that in 2018, and it, I liked it. I think people were probably, like, they had better albums in that year, let alone, like, other better albums that they've released, but, um, I then kind of re-got into them. I did sort of, like, um, Infest the Rat's Nest. 2019. I thought that was a, a fairly fun album, um, but I wish that the sound was a little bit less compressed. Um, I think I get it. I get why they did it, um, but especially uh, this year's uh, Petro Dragonic uh, long album name. I'm not reading that whole thing out, um, where it's like it's the same kind of metal ideas, but uh, you know, a little bit different here and there. 
uh, but the production is way more what I prefer. I do prefer the much more cleaner and uh, fuller tones, full of other um, kinds of like sounds and things like that. Um, and it, yeah, it's much more up my alley, and I really dig that album. Uh, but then I was like, yeah, like all of the 2022 stuff is just like you know the timeline albums, uh, Omnium. Uh, album names get get past me, sorry. Um, but yeah, Om Om Omnium was a great album. I really did like, uh, you know, Ice Death, all that stuff. Uh, that album was really good fun. Um, and I still, uh, you know, I Iron Lung is like legit, like that's on my rotation. That's a jam and a half. Um, I still, I really like Changes as well. That was a great album. All of that in one year. So, some of that appears on this uh, live album, and some of that, uh, a lot of the other stuff I still haven't listened to, uh, I gotta go through. So I'm just like, today, I listened to Butterfly 3000. I never listened to it. It was just, it just came out in 2021, and I'm like, sure. I listened to it, and I just started going, yeah, okay, like, it's, uh, it seems a bit simple and straightforward, and then it's just like, starts clicking. You start, like, feeling it. You start just kind of grooving, but then you go, this is not in common time. This is definitely going going to weird places, but it's like, I'm feeling the catchiness. I'm feeling, like, how groovy it all is. And that is, uh, like, a feed and a half to pull off. Um, it was great fun. And, and, and I really appreciate, like, the difference in tones with a lot of King Gears albums, so... Uh, yeah, no, very, very good fun. Very good fun. I would, I would definitely recommend that album. I would recommend every album they've released later. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, they're, they're definitely good fun. Uh, are they Australia's greatest rock band right now? That is perhaps a true statement. Will I be able to deal with an eight and a half hour long live album? Maybe. Might split it on on the uh, concert, you know, sessions. I feel like when, it, when anything that's longer than two hours starts to be like, yeah, this is a this is a long listen. This is a very like you gotta soak yourself up into this one. Um, I've definitely listened to some other long ones, but yeah, no, like they you do gotta call it at some point. Um, I still think that like 40 or 50 minutes is kind of the sweet spot for studio albums in general. Um, you can definitely do longer ones, but yeah, I remember, um, back in, uh, the early 2000s when I was much more <laughs> aware of what was going on. And it was like, you'd have albums that came out sometimes and they were short, they were real short. And it was like, it actually seemed like a detriment that an album was like crazy short, just on its own. Um, I don't think it's like, you know, a, a fully negative thing for there to be not as much content on, on an album. Um, I definitely think some albums are just too short and then they have bad songs and then it's like, yeah, like, why? Why is it that short? But then there's also, like, there's good albums with, uh, you know, that are short, and it's like, hey, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate it being punchy. And then there's long albums that have a good album's amount of songs on it, but, or sorry, short album's uh, amount of good songs on it, but then they're, like, you know, they're a bit too long. They got some fluff on it. And, uh, yeah, you can sometimes feel that. Um, Nowadays, I feel like it's a bit, a bit better with streaming services. A lot of musicians are kind of releasing what makes the most sense for them. And sometimes it, it, it does get longer and longer. We're starting to get albums that are legitimately, like, pushing 80 minutes just because you can. You know, I, I'll, I'll note uh, Tools Fear Inoculum from 2019. Um, there's, uh, yeah, the new Swans album, although Swans usually has already done that. Um, uh, I note... Oh, I mentioned Omnium. Omnium's a great example. That's another one where it's like, yeah, it's like just peaking past 80 minutes. And I don't think Omnium has a has a um 
uh, a CD version. I think maybe it's on vinyl, but I don't think it's on CD. And, on, and it's on streaming, so I guess you get that. Um, yeah. Lots of interesting stuff. Lots of good stuff for music right now. So, um, yeah, definitely keep your eyes, keep your ears peeled for good fun music. It's kind of confusing. There's two people here with Dotrios. I, I swear, I was like, oh, I'm finding too many Dotrios, aren't I? We're nearly there. So, Nonogram's the only one that needs a bit more, be, a bit more oomph. But yeah, I feel like once everyone's level 50, and then I distribute a couple of rare candies to sweeten the deal, I think I got a good shot. If a bit like, yeah, like all your team were level 40, like four hours ago of gameplay, and now it's like, now they're level 50, but then like, will that save it? I think there's maybe some craftier parts to my strategy, and I'm not 100% sure how well this will go, especially when I get to the end. When I get to the end, this is going to be a little bit dicey here and there, but I'm a little concerned as well because I've been spending all this money on, like, oh, sorry, I've been earning all this money. I'm going to have a lot of money to just, like, buy stuff. More, more full restores, more uh, ethers. I'm going to need to make sure I've got my ethers stocked up because, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do a, um, you know, a struggle competition at the end. <laughs> Didn't I do that in Pokemon Gold? I did a struggle, like, off at the end. Yeah, I could safely say this, this may be the way to get the experience, though, because, yeah, these Pokemon are a lot easier to take out, so. I'll admit it. I will admit the fault of the last stream. Sweep them all and you keep getting faster and faster. Uh, speaking of Australian bands or Australians, uh, I have been a, uh, a decent F1 follower for uh, a few years, uh, since like 2019. Um, I was keeping up with it. And uh, this, or last week, but after the stream, they announced. Uh, the Alpha Towery, the Red Bull Alpha Towery team uh, announced they'd be parting ways with a uh, new driver in his rookie season, Nick DeVries. He's not exactly a rookie in the sense of he's been um, driving, you know, he's, he's, he's older than me. So, I'll just say that. Half the grid is younger than me, it's kind of scary. Um, but then it's also just like, yeah, I'm starting to get to that age. It's like, yeah, people have careers. I have a career. Like, that's, that, that still surprises me. I don't know how that happened. Um, so, okay, all my team is level 50. Uh, let's just fly back, heal up. Let's have a crack at this, by the way. Dude, it's been ages, hasn't it? Since, like... I actually prep for this. So first of all, let's uh, check out the items. Uh, this one poor person has to buy have everything. I have, I have a fair bit of stuff, but uh, ethers is not part of this person's uh, repertoire. So let's just make sure I've got the other stuff while, while I'm checking. So we got full restores. Uh, you can't see how many you have. Usually I run 25, sometimes I'd go 30 if I was super safe. I seem to have 24 full restores and 30 revives. I'm gonna stop, top off on the full restores. And I know full restores are a little more excessive than max potions, because how often do you have a status condition? Legit, like you could just be, you could buy six max potions for the same price as five full restores. Is that how the math works? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is true. But I'd also say, like, I'm not really spending them on anything else, and honestly, like, those few full restores are probably going to save the day, but, yeah. Let's get some ethers while I'm at it, because, uh, oh, and, and let's have a crack at the lottery, because if I win the lottery and I win a Master Ball, then this game is amazing. 
for how many people have streamed this on Twitch? Someone needs to have won a Master Ball live on stream. Right? I'm... I'm not that lucky, though. I mean, the odds aren't, like, that high to, like, really win anything. Uh, alright, who's got the, uh, ethers? Mech mail? Do you have ethers? Nope. Does anyone sell ethers in this game? <laughs> Please sell me ethers. Uh, nope. Is this just gonna be the calcium chick? Yep. The calcium chick. Oh, where are... Where are the ethers? Da 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 da. Ether. Uh... RC... Oh my goodness, really? Cost. Black 2. Has a cost. Ruby Sapphire Emerald does not have a cost. Elixirs do not have a cost. Max elixirs do not have a cost. Max ethers do not have a cost. This is... Huh. Yeah, okay, I swear you could have bought them at some point. Wow, okay. In that case, um... This is gonna be a bit of an interesting, uh... Interesting Elite Four. I th I know I've got enough moves. I just hope that I don't run into a bit where, like, my strat is like, I've ran out. I'm not gonna start improving. You, you know what happens when I start improving in a Pokemon game. It's pain. And anyway, let's heal up. Okay, uh, final touch. Let's get the, uh, oh, let's, let's get the items sorted out. Why not? Uh, so first of all, let's get Armaldo back in from the dead. Hello, Armaldo. Uh, who's got items? Cleanse tag is not that useful, so let's, uh, Take the... Uh, you can't take the items off in this game, it's 4th uh, gen, isn't it? Um, item, take... Okay. So, let's look through the bag, let's see what I've got. We've got four stores, let's move them to the top. And revives, let's move them to the top as well. i got a bunch of stuff that's just all over the place, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, I've got the Quick Claw. The Quick Claw would be nice for having a Pokemon that is... Usually not that fast. I'm thinking Sedimentar is probably going to be the best one for that. Just the odds of him, you know, maybe being able to beat the opponent in terms of, like, uh, a move there. Okay, let's go to Withdraw. We've got Increase the Power of Ground-type moves. That might be really good. Um, yeah, there's my Aethers, so I might as well take out the Aethers. Uh, do I have Elixirs as well? Yeah. Uh, pfft. Just drew the King's Rock. Uh, Nevermelt Ice might be kind of nice as well. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We've got... Uh, hi, Uppets, how are you doing? Uh, I am planning for uh, doing some really, really spooky Elite Four. I don't know if my team is going to be that good, but, uh, we're just checking to see if I've got any other kinds of items. I am... I don't exactly have a lot of, a lot of items I could even be using Yeah, Let's get the rare candies out while I'm at it. But I'm looking at this going like, yeah, like, Everstone? Like, Moonstone? Black glasses? Oh, I've run out of room in the bag. Uh... Listen, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna need the harbor mail anymore. And I don't think I need to hold the big pearls for now. Um... But yeah, like, I'm looking through the rest of this going, apart from, like, the black glasses here, none of this is, like... I got a hard stone, but, like, no one else has a rock-type attack. Uh... 
kind of mystic water, I guess. Wax and sense is like something. I guess. Listen, I planned the moves. I didn't plan what they'd be <laughs> what they'd be uh, going for. Magnet would be kind of nice for the one bit of electric. Uh, <laughs> gosh, inventory sorting. The worst part is that if you really want like some like, because a lot of these items are one-offs, and it's actually a lot easier to just like store them on Pokemon. Um. Uh, there we go, magnet. Yeah, pretty much that's it. That's it. Okay, let's pop these items on. Uh, so first of all, we've got the uh, King's Rock. Uh, who'd be good with the King's Rock? And the foe is hit. That might be a riffraff thing because he's going to be, you know, attacking. Uh, Never melt ice. Let's give that to Cast Form because he's got an ice attack. Uh, soft sand for the ground attack. Let's give that to Kipperoni. I did pull out the Mystic Water, but black glasses. Uh, who has? No one has a dark attack on my team at all. So that's not gonna be any useful. Uh, a magnet might be nice for Rebox. And the Lax Sense, the <laughs> slightly lowers the foe's accuracy. That is, uh, yeah, definitely a nonogram thing. Okay, this is my team. I, let's let's introduce this just for posterity. I have Ninjask here. He's quiet nature. He's got these as his stats. Oh, I haven't used the rare candies. Hold on. All right, let's get the rare rare candies going. None of these Pokemon are particularly like. Uh, to I, I feel like I'm gonna open with Nonogram a bit, so maybe let's give him just like a couple more, and then I feel like. Rebox. And Riffraff would probably want like a bit more. Yeah, there we go. We'll go with that. Okay. So I'm gonna first of all, let's uh, turn the battle scene on because people people want the battle scene finally. I'm gonna save. 26, 25, 26 Pokedex. That's a bit of grinding, but sure, okay. Uh, let's let's do a run through of the final team before I go. So here's Ninjas. He's quiet in nature. These are his stats. He is crazy speedy, uh, and his attack is fairly good. Um, the rest of his stats are kind of okay, but that's fine. I'm going in with Sword Sense, Slash, Shadow Ball, and Baton Pass. I know. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I've got Kipperoni, the Swampert. He is lonely, lonely, but that's okay because he has high attack. Actually, much better attack than that. Um, he's actually, does he have the highest HP on the team? He does. It's, it's kind of interesting and fun. Um, he's got Earthquake, Munch... I still have Mudshot. I don't have any better move to teach him. That's the problem. <laughs> so, we'll keep Mudshot as like a... I guess, kind of move. I've got him boosting ground type attacks, he's got stab, he's probably gonna get a thing. Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> it, I'm probably not gonna be using it though. We'll, we'll probably be fine there. Um, let's go back in. Uh, Magcargo here, he's careful, he's got that. Uh, he is crazy bulky, again, probably best on the defense and, uh, not the special defense though, that is. No, he's not even best on defense. Oh, he is best on defense. Um, He's not that fast, but that's okay, because he's got Amnesia, Light Screen, Flamethrower, and Sunny Day. He's just gonna sit there and tank hits like a champ. Amazing. Uh, Grunt Pick here, he is bold. Uh, he's got own tempo, that's cool. Um, very good, he's gonna be like my special attack kind of guy. I think he's the second fastest on the team as well. Yeah. Um, so he'll be very nice to, to open with and sweep with. Uh, Calm Mind, Shockwave, Psychic, and Confuse Ray uh, will be his attacks. Uh, cast Form here, he's got he's an impish nature. Uh, pretty all over the board, which is just how he is anyways. Uh, Thunder, Rain Dance, Weather Ball, and Ice Beam. It's gonna be a fun, just like whatever. And last one is Armaldo here, uh, with Battle Armor to block the crits, and he's impish. So, uh, very high attack, and his defense is fairly good, and his health is fairly good too. Um, 
Not the fastest, but he doesn't need special uh, attack, because all he's going to do is a bunch of physical things. Brick Break, Aerial Ace, Return, and Ancient Power. Uh, very fun assortment of moves, and uh, perhaps this is uh, exactly... Um, you know, like, uh, may maybe this is uh, going to be good enough, who knows? Who knows? Maybe. Uh, so, I think... I think, yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to go in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's... I'll try and save on each one, and then uh, if, we, if we fail, we'll just try it again. Uh, Welcome, challenger. I am Sydney of the Elite Four. I like that look you're giving me. I guess you'll give me a good match. That's good. Looking real good. All right, you and me. Good. Let's enjoy a battle that can only be saved here in the Pokemon League. I said this last time. So in the last stream, I took an attempt at the Elite Four, maybe at this point in the stream. And, uh, yeah, all my Pokemon were ten levels lower. So let's just pretend that didn't happen. Let's go in with this. He starts off with a Mighty Ena, level 46. It's got Intimidate, so he is going to be a bit mean here, but... I've got a strat. We're going to start off with the Sword Stance. Now, the Sword Stance is only going to bump me up to plus one attack because he did use the, um, the Intimidate. He's got Crunch as one of his attacks, which is kind of gnarly, and uh, lowering my Special Defense, which is kind of mean as well, but that's okay because i got the Speed Boost. And now I'm going to Baton Pass. We're going to Baton Pass out to Riff Raff here. Uh, so, Mighty Ina, yeah, he's got Crunch. He's going to probably spam Crunch a bit. Um, there's a very uncomfortable amount of damage he's dealt, but that's okay because I've got a speed boost now, so now I can get him with the Brick Break and be faster than him. That's the magic. That was the power I've got. Now, I've only got a plus one attack, but it is Armaldo, and it is also full of level 46s in this fight, so it's probably not that bad. Um, so his other moves were Crunch, Takedown, or he's got Crunch, Takedown, Sand Attack, and Roar. Roar would have been a little bit mean, but... I only needed one go, and I don't think he was going to use Raw on his first go, so. Uh, next up we've got Sharpedo. Sharpedo uh, has Rough Skin as his ability, which is going to be a little mean, but that's okay. I am going to spam Brick Break on this fight, I swear. Listen, if I can spam a move, that's that's all that works, so. That's uh, okay with the Rough Skin. He knew Surf, Crunch, Slash, and Swagger. Um, so that's okay. Uh, here comes Cacturn. Cacturn here has uh, Faint Attack, Needle Arm, Cotton Spore, and Leech Seed. Uh, Aerial Ace is still, you know, a great move. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna spread out my moves a bit, but sure, okay. Um, uh, ooh, here comes, here comes the mean one of the team. This is his, uh, his big, um, you know, catch-all Pokemon. Uh, maybe Brick Break will be good, but it's gonna be fast. Oh, he's going to try and snatch me as well. So he's got Sword Stance, Slash, Aerial Ace, and Snatch. Now, Aerial Ace is a bit of a ugh kind of move. Uh, snatch is an interesting one, which is um, uh, basically allows you to steal the move, I guess. So what is this? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. After being used, if another Pokemon, including an ally, attempts to use a beneficial... Oh, sorry. It attempts to recreate the, the status, a status move that's used if that was the one on that turn, but in that case it wasn't. Uh, last one is Shift Tree. Shift Tree here uh, has Fake Out, Extra Sensory, Double Team, and Swagger. He might... Oh, he didn't even come in with the Fake Out. Fake Out is a high priority move and it only hits on the very first turn of the... Well, when they're sent out. It's a hilarious move. It, I don't know why they even added it in this game, but it's hilarious. Well, how do you like that? I lost! Hey, it was fun, so it doesn't matter. Was it fun? You got your butt kicked real bad. Well, listen to what this loser has to say. You've got what it takes to go far. Now go on to the next room and enjoy your next battle. Uh, so, okay. That went, uh, smoothly. Let's go in with the, the, you know... Let's, let's heal up 69. Nice. Nice. But that was a, that was a good setup. That was a good... That, that went very smoothly. That went very smoothly. Okay. Let's save here. Okay, now I'm trying to think off the top of my head. What's the plan? What is the next plan? 
I think the next plan is... Uh... You know, somewhat ironically, I think Monogram is actually the best thing to continue taking out the, the, the next uh, ones. Yeah, let's have a go at it. Let's have a go at it. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Ah ha 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 ha! I'm Phoebe. Ah, Phoebe. Of the Elite Four, I did my training on Mount Pyre. While I trained, I gained the ability to commune with ghost-type Pokémon. Yes, I am not insane at all. So come on, just try to see if you can even inflict damage on my Pokémon. Okay, okay, sure thing, sure thing. Alright, Phoebe starts off with a Dusclops. I am uh, gonna try and pull the exact same strat I just did before. So we're gonna start off with the Sword Stance. The Dusclops here uh, has pressure, which is kind of annoying. Uh, he's got Shadow Punch, uh, which should do a bit, but not too much. That's cool. Uh, he's got Curse, Confuse Ray, and Future Sight as well, which would be kind of annoying. I'm gonna now just come in with a Shadow Ball because uh, Ghost is weak against Ghost, and I have two attack stat ups, and I'm faster than him. This, I was thinking, ah, oh, Nonogram might get kind of wrecked by, like, everyone here. Um, maybe not. Maybe I'm going to sweep this one fight with the uh, Nonogram. Might be alright. Uh, it's got two Dust Wops. Or well, she's got two Dust Wops. Uh, this one's got Confuse Ray, Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, and Earthquake. Uh, the Earthquake is no problem. The Ice Beam, potentially a problem. Is a problem. Darn. Okay, uh, take two on, uh, what do we do? The only thing is, yeah, I can't really use Rebox. That's my one catch, because he's Psychic type, and I'm very certain Ghost is strong against Psychic. Everything else is pretty fair game, but I'm not allowed to use normal, uh, what's it? I'm not allowed to use normal or fighting against the Ghost, and in the case of an upcoming uh, Sableye, I'm also not allowed to use Dark-type, I think? I think you're not allowed to use Dark-type on Sableye, is that? Not allowed to use Psychic on Sableye. Psychic works, but, yeah. Um... Yeah, problem is Rebox is sort of the speedier one. Um... So, let's, uh... Who's gonna be my fastest of the remaining ones? I guess Swampert is, technically. Alright, let's go on with it. As long as I'm faster than this Dusclops who has a Citrus Berry. It really doesn't mean much at that point. Um, yeah, as long as I can not use Return, I should be okay. None of these people levitate, so Earthquake's okay. And that was level 51 Dusclops as well, so it was going to be a bit. Uh, there are two Bennets. So, uh, we'll take a guess which one this one is. Uh, Bennett is pretty ordinary. Uh, it's the evolution of a uh, Shuppet. Um, and yeah, they're both level 49, so... Uh, nice, by the way. Uh, this one, no sh Well, they both know Shadow Ball. That also isn't helpful at all. Uh, and that lowers my special defense, which is not fun. Uh, oh! Yeah, I guess, like all gym leaders and stuff, and rich trainers, they're going to be using two full restores in the fight. Uh, that's probably not... That was a decent amount of damage for what that was. I might be able to just spam that twice instead of... Yeah. Uh, so one of these bayonets knows Spite, Will-O-Wisp... Uh, that's... Yeah, good thing I'm not getting caught out by that one. Uh, Shadow Ball or Faint Attack. Um, okay, we're now going in with the Sableye here. Uh, the Sableye is interesting because, yeah, nothing is super effective against the Sableye. Um, but I don't think Sableye has, like, got that high of stats anyways. Actually, it... Uh, yeah, no, he's not... He's not too strong. So you actually might be able to just get him with an earthquake. It's not fast either, so... Oh, and a crit always helps. Uh, he's got Faint Attack, Shadow Ball, Psychic, and Attract. Every one of these Pokemon knows Shadow Ball. And a good number of them know... Something kind of annoying to go with it, so... Uh, there's one last Bennett. We don't have too many ghosts in this game, so... I guess, yeah, okay. 
Uh, let's go with the mud shot again. That seemed to work, honestly. Uh, this one, if it's the second one in this list. Wow! Cool. Good job, Kiproni. Uh, would have known Toxic Skill Swap, Ooh. Uh, Shadow Ball, and Psychic. Actually, I don't have anything in my team that particularly relies on the skills. Of cast form. There's a definite bond between you and your Pokemon too. I didn't recognize it, so it's only natural that I lost. Yep. I'd like to see how far your bond will carry you. Go ahead. Move on to the next room, so. I've never had actually that much issues with Phoebe. I found her team to be very underwhelming. Like, it never, it never got that bad. Uh, so I have not shown three Pokemon in my team. I know Sedimentar is just chilling there. He'll get there at some point. Um, in fact, actually, he might have a time to shine in this upcoming fight. For a moment. Yeah, actually, I think he might, might go out with him. <laughs> I'm going out with Sedimentar. There we go. Let's have another save. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. I'm doing our okay. Because here's the thing as well, like, not only are you getting some fairly wicked experience from doing these fights, um, but also just remember that your team has, uh, like, effort values from being trained up, whereas I don't think anyone in this game that you fight against have effort values. So a Pokemon that's level 50 is probably not going to be as strong as your level 50s. Welcome, my name is Glacier of the Elite Four. I've traveled from afar to Hoenn so that I may hone my skills. That is a pun. But all I have seen are challenges by weak trainers and their Pokemon. What about you? It would please me to no end if I could go all out against you. Okay. Now, I think I've had problems against Glacier before. So, uh, I'm gonna, gonna grain a saw on how I do this one. But, uh, she starts off with a Glalie. Uh... There's also not very many ice types in this game. Uh, I'm gonna go out with a flamethrower. Glalie is bound to be faster and crunches one of her moves. Uh, that is gonna lower my special defense, but I do have amnesia, so maybe I could... Maybe I should have set myself up on amnesia. Crunch is physical though, so... Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, oh, kick him with amnesia. <laughs> oh, you're doing a full restore turn. It's a good move. Uh, yeah. She's got hail, light screen, ice beam, and crunch. Uh, ice beam is... Well, she can't do a ton. Like, yeah, Crunch is a bit of a mean move, but... Oh, I, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul. Like, yeah, Crunch is going to be physical, you know, like... Actually, is it physical? I can't tell which moves were physical and which ones weren't, but like... I guess, yeah, if this is like reducing the thing... Okay, okay, we're gonna wing this one. I mean, she's just gonna kick in with a... Oh, I, yeah, whoops, one more. One, one too many amnesias. And now this is the catch, is that, okay, like, she's gonna use hail here. But, like, and also every Pokemon knows hail except for the very, very last one. And Hail is sort of a bit annoying, but then it's just like, I'm just gonna like, kick him with Sunny Day. And then your Hail means nothing. Now I'm not exactly faster, but as long as nothing crits... I'm not, I'm not getting into this one though. Now we should be able to have a decent sweep Oh, yeah, and there was a light screen, too. This is gonna get kind of annoying, isn't it? Yeah, this is gonna get annoying when you keep doing light screen. Maybe I should do one. Gosh. Yeah, I wish I had... Maybe I should have brought in some, like, extra special attacks. I'm not going to feel bad about spamming an item in the middle of this fight, though. So. Alright, well there goes one Glalie. 2002, what a nice year. Uh, okay, there are two Celios, but fortunately they have different levels, so I can tell which one's which. This one knows Surf, Ice Ball, Hail, and Body Slam. This is 
sort of mean. Like, yeah, you're gonna see, oh no, Surf, and I am quite weak to- oh. I was expecting the, the, the Amnesias to help out a little more. Well, okay then. That's, that's fine. Because, uh, three Pokemon on the, this person's team is, uh, Ice Water. So, I don't exactly have a great kind of go against that. But what I can do is kick him with a Confuse Ray, which will buy me a bit of time. And then we're gonna bump again. We're gonna buff again. Look at Celio, it's so sad. Also, now I think about it, I don't think I've really had an amazing strategy either, because I'm also going, like... All three of these ice waters, Celio, Celio, and there's gonna be a wall rain, because you know there's always gonna be a wall rain. Also have thick fat. Me constantly using a fire type attack, which is normal effective, because ice is strong and water is not. Uh, and then, yeah, having it half damage because of thick fat. It's like, eh, could be better. Uh, I'll kick him with a shockwave. Why not? Let's see how this goes. I don't think, Celio is very bulky. I'm not expecting to defeat Celio in one turn, but that's a good, like, you know, that's a good setup. That's a good go. I feel like this train is probably going to be the most obnoxious one, I mean, type-wise. Or the champion. The champion might be pretty bad. Uh, but I don't expect the next one to actually be that much of a problem for me. So, we'll see how this goes. I'm also starting to think maybe level, third, level 50 is, like, not necessarily overkill, but just, like, yeah. Now, I'm a little worried because this clearly has crunch. Um, so... This Glalie could wreck my day. Uh, I could rock the Confuse Ray. Or I could probably just accept defeat and die. Oh, it's got Shadow Ball as well. It's got two moves, Shadow Ball and Crunch. Both are gonna wreck my day. Uh, yeah, okay. It's also got Ice Beam and Hail. Woo! Am I gonna live? Am I gonna live? I think I'm gonna live if I use this psychic hit. Because I'm thinking, like, I need to get this Glalie out of the way. Okay, we're going in with Celio number two Leo. Uh, this Celio is uh, got Hail Blizzard, and you gotta watch out, Blizzard always hits while it's hailing. Um, dive, I know, right? Dive, and Attract. I'm female, so that's okay, but uh, Sedimentile was my other female, so. I kind of hope this isn't too bad, but I don't think it would be. Not after a Calm Mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm Mind has prepped me for this. Uh, I'm just going to go with two Shockwaves. I don't think we need a Confuse Raid set up on this one. But yeah, no, the Blizzards are definitely going to be a bit oof. The one thing I am hoping for is that the hail dies off, because the last Pokemon, the War Rain, it knows Blizzard, it doesn't know hail. Uh, I think Blizzard has a 70% accuracy, so it's kind of like Thunder, it's not like... ...worse. Uh, now, this War Rain, you gotta, you gotta double watch out, because... Maybe I should've used Confuse Ray, because I, I feel like he's gonna be bulky enough to take three hits. Oh, he could take two. But he's got sheer coal. He's got sheer coal. Now, you gotta be crazy concerned. Because also that, that citrus berry might be a problem. Yeah, it might be a problem. I don't think I'm gonna get this hit. And then it's just gonna use this full restore. You're gonna keep trying that sheer coal. Okay, so Blizzard is like, yeah, okay, you know, it's a that's an attack, sure. Uh surf. Actually, I should, I should be fine, because then I'll use Shockwave first next turn, and we're fine. So, no problem, no problem. Alright, so Blizzard and Surf, not very fun. Body Slam as well, high amount of damage on, on that one, that's physical. And then Sheer Cold, which is a one-hit KO move. We haven't really <laughs> gone into them at all. Um, but, yeah, they... Are they actually... Are the one-hit KO moves... Like, were they new to this game? 
Sheer cold is new to this game, I'll say that. So, uh, yeah, it has a 30% chance of hitting, but when it hits, it ignores what on earth you are and just kills you. Uh, or if it doesn't hit because of your type, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if, you're, if you're unlucky, that sheer cold is going to destroy your team, but most likely it will destroy one person. Um, I got lucky there. She had two uses, didn't get it, so advance to the next room. And there, confirm the truly fearsome side of the Pokemon League. Um, so Rip Sedimentar, he had, had a moment and then didn't quite get there, but sure, okay. Uh, Kipperoni had a moment. The only one who hasn't had a moment is Armaldo. Oh, sorry, Armaldo has a moment. Um, Castform hasn't had a moment. So, okay. I'm still feeling good. I'm still feeling good. We haven't, we haven't goofed. We haven't goofed yet. We're doing alright. Uh... This is now where Cast Form actually gets the shine. Perhaps. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um... I think I've got some backup. I think. Yeah, I've got, I've got a backup. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah, it should be okay. Look at this sailor guy! I am the last of the Pokemon League, Elite Four, Drake of the 99 Dragon Masters. In their one natural state, Pokemon are wild living things. Blah, I've pressed that too soon. At times they hinder us, at times they help us. For us to battle with Pokemon as partners. Do you know what it takes? Do you know what is needed? If you don't, then you will never prevail over me. Never! So, yeah, they gotta have a dragon guy. Why would they not have a dragon guy? Look at this guy, Drake. He starts off with Shellgon. It's level 52, which is sort of in line with my team. Like, the champion <laughs> bumps his levels up crazy, but yeah, everything else is not too bad. Uh, all dragons are weak to ice. All his team is dragon type. I'm gonna hope that this does fairly okay, but eh, okay. He's got Rock Tomb, which doesn't have 100% accuracy, as you can tell. And he's burnt to full restore on the Shellgun. Nice. I love when, like, a Pokemon takes two attacks, oh sorry, takes two hits for you to take out, and you're faster, because then it means that them using a full restore means nothing. They've just burnt a full restore, and then you've just used your move three times, so. Uh, this guy knows Dragon Claw, Rock Tomb, Protect, and Crunch. Also, Protect could have been a priority move to give me up, but... Nothing too weird. Uh, next one is Alteria, who is actually quad weak to ice, so therefore, I'm hoping... Yeah, okay. It knows Dragon Breath, which is a flat... Ugh. Ugh. That's not good. Okay, I've gotten the Ice Beam out, at least. Maybe I should use a full restore on this one. Um... Oh, dang, man, Altaria. A bit bulky. Uh, Dragon Dance, which is just a increased attack and defense attack, but you gotta watch out on that one. Um, okay, a few, a few, we're good. Uh, take Down and Refresh. Interesting, but sure, okay. Okay, we're sitting pretty right now. Uh, next up is Flygon. This is another problem. We've got two Flygons with the same level. So I'm going to have to guess which one's which. Uh, let's chuck a full restore. We'll see how this goes. Um, Flygon is a ground uh, dragon, which is an interesting combo. Also, Sandstorm, you say? Sandstorm, you say? The one type that I don't get a, a, a form to benefit from, and I just get hit by the sandstorm. Cars form, you're supposed to be the weather Pokemon. You can't even, can't even deal with Flygon. Um, oh gosh, Bulbapedia's having a moment. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, look up his stats. The whole site has just died on me. Nice. Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, I thought I had no internet there for a moment. Oh, that's even worse. Da, 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 da. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let's look up the stats. I wish I, I, I should have it written down, but yeah. Flygon, still weak to ice. Because ground is weak to ice. They still got Dragon Breath, uh, which is not very fun. Uh, both of them have Dragon Breath. Um, since this one knows Sandstorm, this one also knows Fly and Dig. Um, I am going to burn all my Ice Beams on this one, so I'm going to need to use an Elixir eventually. I don't exactly need... Um... 
Yeah, I don't exactly need a cast form on the very last one. It would be nice on the last one, though. Alright, well, let's go with Flygon number two. Now, this one is a little meaner, uh, because he knows Flamethrower, Crunch, Sand Attack, and Dragon Breath. That's right. The, the worst attack in the world, Sand Attack. But, it's not too bad. Flamethrower is gonna kinda catch me out. Well, it's not actually too bad. I'm actually surprised how, like, Cast Form is able to take these attacks. I would have expected it to be, like, way worse. Now, Flygon is fast. I'm not expecting it to be Flygon. I'm just hoping that it takes, you know, fewer than two attacks for me to, to take him out. But since he's quad weak, you know, he opens himself up to uh, just spamming a full restore on that one. Nice. Okay, that's two full restores burnt. Alright, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Yeah, you might, I guess you can make the case of, like, I'm, I'm sort of breezing through this, like, I'm able to take, you know, three or four hits before I go down. Unless this is a Famous last words right there. And then I'm just like, oh, just spam a full so That's kind of how I handle the, the, the league. But it's like, you need to be able to attack first, or at least, like, get attacks off. And, uh, yeah, the problem is when you're super underleveled, you got no opportunity. You, you just can't open up. So... Uh, last Pokemon here is Salamence. He's got Intimidate, which is uh, not actually the problem because I've been just spamming... Um, how many Ice Beams do I have left? Zero. Cool. I'm going to need to spam a, an Aether on this one. Because I, I, I knew it's like, oh, this is my one Ice type. So Salamence is potentially worse. You might kick my butt even harder. I might need to spam one of those Max Potions. Uh, but let's get... An ether in. Let's get Ice Beam back up to snuff. Unless I don't get to use Ice Beam again. Uh, Salamance here knows Flamethrower, Dragon Claw, Crunch, and Fly. Oh, that's not fun. Because that's going to mean that I don't get to hit him twice. He's going to spam Flamethrower. I'm going to take the hit. Oh, you know what I... well... No, I don't... <sighs> no, I'll just kick him with the ice beam. Uh, Dragon Claw is the second move, it might just kill me. Yeah, okay. Alright, we're gonna have to improv. <laughs> uh, which shouldn't be too bad. I've got Riff Raff. I've got Riff Raff. I'll have a go. Um, because... Uh, he's flying type, so he's gonna be weak to rock. Dragon Claw might be a bit of a mean move, but... Oh. But I got Ancient Power. It's got Stab. It might increase my stats. Who knows? He's got a Citrus Berry, so... He's also got Crunch and Fly. Uh, neither of those attacks is too mean. I'm just hoping this Dragon Claw doesn't crit, and then we're fine. We're safe. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Phew. 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 So yeah. The Salamance is definitely... He's, he's a bit of a mean one, but it's not... It's not impossible, so... Because I, because I beat him. It's clearly not impossible. You deserve every credit for coming this far as a trainer of Pokémon. You do seem to know what is needed. Yes, what a trainer needs is a virtuous heart. Pokémon touch the good hearts of trainers and learn good from wrong. They touch the good hearts of trainers and grow strong. It rhymes. Go, go onwards, the champion is waiting. Okay, so... Uh... <laughs> I got my, my PP back, so that's all fine. Uh, so I feel like, apart from Megcargo not exactly having the best kind of intro, I think everyone's had, like, a, a turn, right? Everyone's had a go. So, and no one's really been that bad. Everyone's, except for Megcargo, maybe. <laughs> poor Megcargo. Just never, never gonna have, have his, you know, day in the sun. Um, so I'm thinking... Nah, I can't start with- I was- I wanted to start with Nonogram and then do the sweep, but... I don't think it can. I don't think there's... any opportunity... 
for setting up the sweep. Because everyone knows there's only one Pokemon who can't wreck him, and that's unfortunately the last one. Uh, so, I'm gonna start with Sedimentar, but hey, hey, you know, we're at the final fight. So, if, if we goof, we just try it again. We just try it again. Okay? Here we go. Let's go through to the final challenge. They hype this up. The music is dramatic. The gym leader music is dramatic. The scenes are dramatic. Uh, is this the awkward... Yeah, this is this is one of the awkward uh, final bosses. <laughs> this one throws everyone off. When you walk in a room, the control is taken from you. So, yeah, that's why I've been saving off, like right after fighting, not before fighting the next one. I was looking forward to seeing you here one day. I've forgotten whatever accents I've been giving everyone. You, what did you see on your journey with Pokemon? What did you feel meeting so many other trainers like you? What is awoken in you? Please stop, Steven. I want you to hit me. Now bring, oh my gosh, Steven, I'm not into that. Here comes Steven with his, you know, he's got that music going. I mean, this is the champion, you know. This is this is where dreams are made of. Uh, so first of all, he starts off with Skarmory. Skarmory has not there's not really that many special attacks, so I'm gonna have to go and go in with it. Why am I faster than Skarmory? Skarmory really that slow? Sure. Uh, Skarmory starts off here with Steel Wing, Toxic. Now I'm starting to think maybe I should have had rest. Uh, Aerial Ace and Spike. Spikes would be a horrendous thing for him to set up. I would prefer... Never mind, he was faster than me. Um, yeah, Spice is going to make it so every time I send out a Pokemon, it loses an eighth of its health. That's going to get annoying. Especially when I switch between between turns, so... Uh, but that's okay. Uh, next up, he's got Armaldo. That's right, he's using my strat against me. Isn't he supposed to have Steel types as well? Armaldo isn't even like... He's Rock Bug. He's not Steel. <laughs> Uh, so Armaldo is conveniently weak to water, and even though Kiparoni isn't exactly a, uh, a special sweeper, I think it is probably the right move to go with that, so a lot of the scene is all purple as well. Very nice and fancy, so Armaldo here, rock bug type, uh, let's go on with the water. Um, he knows Ancient Power, Slash, Aerial Ace, and Water Pulse. That's right, he's using the Aerial Ace strat on me, and he also has... Uh, aerial, uh, ancient Power as well, but he's decided to go with uh, Water Pulse and Slash, whereas like I've gone with Return, which is probably the Slash is a pretty good move though, to be honest. Or either or, but I do like Return. Uh, it's not too bad, like because I got the two hit strat going on here. Uh, Water Pulse is a weird one. It's he's going to be playing on Confusion, so uh, you know he's probably too good for me. Alright, next up is Agron. Agron, I might stick in with... I got a couple of things I can... Oh, actually, no, no, I... Ooh. No, yeah, yeah, no, we'll stick in. Uh, Agron, don't be baited. Even though he is weak to earth, <laughs> to ground and fighting with a four times weakness, if you check out his base stats, he has 180 defense and 60 special defense. That's right, an equal powered special move deals three times the amount of damage. And water's already super effective, so you're kind of already good on that front. He, like, he doesn't have the special defense to warrant what he is, but yeah, oh dude, if you, like, don't do anything physical against him. Just don't. Not even, not even for the four times weakness. It's not worth it. Uh, next up is Cradley. Cradley is the other fossil Pokemon. This thing is rock and grass type, which means, uh... I've got a decent free pick on this one. I don't think anything is like particularly that bad. So let's go with Riff Raff on this one. Uh, yeah, no, no, no spikes. Uh, Cradley here knows Ancient Power, Confuse Ray, Sludge Bomb, and Giga Drain. Uh, definitely not the kindest attacks in the world, but at the end of the day, you know you can use Brick Break, you can use Aerial Ace. Actually, you can't use Aerial Ace because. Uh, Rock. Uh, yeah, Ancient Power on me is not going to be kind, but that's okay, because I can... I hope Brick Break's going to kill him. If not, then we're going to need a sweep. We're going to need a sweep tap. Oh, we're going to need a sweep tap. 
Oh, dang, we're good. I was like, let's bait that second, that second floor restore out of them. Cradley is a very weird looking Pokemon though. Like, Armaldo looks sorta of normal. But like, I don't know what's going on with this guy. It's very funky looking. Okay, let's get that full restore out. Full force, <laughs> just see Sedimenta is still rocking the PlayStation Network. Yeah. He's gonna really spam that ancient power, isn't he? Are you gonna get that all stat buff? Nah. <laughs> he's not he's not that lucky. But yeah, five PP. You can't spam it too much, bro. Uh we could kill him. We might not. Done. Uh, uh, oh, dang. Forgot he hasn't used his other full restore. Ah, uh, I went in with the uh, the stylish kill, only to kind of ruin it. I mean, return's a good attack, but he's rock type, so that was a flex move. A very poorly, poorly chosen one as well. Well, good, good news. I also have full restores, you know. I think I ain't Nuzlocke in this, I've lost, uh, two dudes. You know, it's been a fairly smooth run so far. That's famous last words. Confuse Ray, so... Okay. I was expecting, um, Sludge Bomb and then just, like, immediately poison me as well, but... Listen, I only need one hit, and then we're safe. Yes! There we go. There we go. I- the luck is on my side right now. The luck is going alright. We've only got two left, and I've still got a bajillion items I can spam. Champion Steven is about to send out Claydol. Now, Claydol, uh, word of warning, he's got Levitate. Uh, he's Grass... Oh, sorry, he's, he's uh, Ground Psychic. So, um, I think there's a lot of things you could do against him, though. Um, I have a feeling... <laughs> it's not the greatest feeling in the world. Hey, let's let's send out Nonogram. Let's get that let's get that uh that baton pass going in here. Uh, also, I don't think Spikes hurts anything that doesn't stand on the ground. So he's got Ancient Power. That's that's my like one. Mm, let's see how we go. But hey, you know I can use Sword Stance. If I live, then cool. If I don't live, then uh, yeah, I should be good. Yeah. Okay, cool. And now, I can Baton Pass... ...back out to... Uh... To... I guess I'll just go back to... I was gonna go to Kipperoni. I was like, well, I can't use Earthquake right now. You know what, actually? Let's keep him. Let's keep him for the moment. I don't trust this amount of health. I really don't trust this amount of health. He's gonna, he's gonna kick him with the Ancient Power. That's not too bad. Uh, and then let's, uh... Yeah... I don't trust the Earthquake. I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna play it real safe. Because I'm on less than half health, so if he did deal more than half damage... Alright, Reflect, so that's... Well, that's physical. I'm not going in with physical. We're going on with Surf. Okay, so he knows Earthquake, Ancient Power, Light Screen, and Reflect. He's got both, you know, both types, Light Screen and Reflect. And then, uh... Whoa, he's setting up. He's setting up. He knows. He knows. Yep. Now, Earthquake is not a fun attack, but Claydol isn't the... You know, it's not the heavy... Oh, jeez, you got three full restores? Jeez. Okay. Um, yeah, Claydol doesn't have the highest, like, physical attack. It's not bad, it's just... Well, it's, it's as good as I am using Surf, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, that, uh... That, uh, light screen and reflect is, uh, not exactly fun, so I'm gonna stay in just for the moment. I'm gonna burn a full restore again. Now, if only I had my Brick Break. <laughs> I was a little worried I could've used Brick Break. But then I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll ride it with, uh, Kipperoni just for the moment. Um, I should be faster than him before he does any setup, so he should be good. Should be good. There we go. Okay. We got one more left. I got one more left. How cool is this? 
and he's coming out with the big, the bad, the Metagross. Metagross here, the highest level Pokemon you'll come across until a little bit post-game. Level 58, Meteor Mash, Earthquake, Psychic, and Hyper Beam. Now the nice thing with Metagross is he has only got 70 speed. And I've already gotten the speed buff Baton Pass, and I've also had the Sword Stance Baton Pass. But he does have 130 defense. I'm not expecting this to kill, oh my goodness. That's it, that's a game by the way. That's a game, that, I told you. I told, anyone who doubted me on this team, apart from Magcargo, I sort of get that one. But legit, legit, this is the moment. This is the moment, the glory comes down, the sky, the clouds part, the sun shafts shine down in its glorious splendor. This was the method to the madness. The stupidness of my team trying to get through the game was sort of... This was what it was for. It was for dealing with this. Having Baton Pass, which is something I couldn't even use until I was level 45. I, I'm so sad you can't use that in any other part of the game. But that was what it was for. This Baton Pass is the miracle source because now it means I've got two attack buffs and a speed buff. It doesn't matter that I'm lower level. I'm faster and heavier hitting. And I got a super effective move because Earthquake. And I'm also Swamper and Earthquake is an amazing attacker. So he's got Meteor Match, Earthquake, Psychic and Hyper Beam. All of those moves hit hard. But if you go first, he can't do anything. And that's that. Congratulation! You have completed a great game and have proven the worth of your culture. Now go and rest our heroes. The feelings you have for your Pokemon and the Pokemon that responded to those feelings with all their might is talking about fighting more. They came together as one and created an even greater power and thus you were able to firmly grasp victory today. You are rightfully the Hoenn Regent's new me now, how would you like some advice before you challenge a champion? Me now, are you trying to tell me you've beaten the champion? See, what did I tell you, Br- You've not seen you for like 10 streams. Didn't I tell you that you don't need to worry about being now? Being now, you've finally done it. When I heard you defeated your own father at the Petalburg Gym, <laughs> that's a fun context, I thought perhaps you had a chance. But to think you've actually become the champion. Ah, yes. What became of your Pokedex? Here, let me see. Oh, he's going to scoff. You've seen 150. That is a good amount to see. And you caught 26. Some Pokemon only appear in certain areas. You need to be persistent. Anyways, congratulations. Don't go prowling into the final room. Being now, no, the new champion. Come with me. I'm sorry, but uh, from, from here on, only trainers who have become champions for Anto. You'll have to wait outside with the Professor. How did he get this far? Like, did he fight every other trainer leading up, or was it just like, oh, I'm a 10 year old? Tell me how that's the rule. Bino, way to go. Congratulations. You don't even get to refight him. Like, he it, it was, it was done ages ago. This room. This is where we keep records of Pokemon that prevail through harsh battles. It is here that the lead champions are honored. Come on, let's record your name as a trainer who triumphed over the Pokemon League and the names of the partners who battled with you. Yeah, okay, that went way smoother than I expected. And I, I always worry about, like, you know, defeating the Pokemon League. Um, but yeah, inevitably at the end of the, the day, this went really well. I had a good time with this game. I do think, yeah, so I kind of got caught out with the grinding stuff at the end. But ultimately, at the end of the day, like, Pokemon Sapphire and Ruby are good, fun games. They take it pl pretty straight, but they've added in enough of, like, a story and a bit of a world thing that, um, I think it makes the game feel a bit more special. And on top of that, um, like, if anything, I think it gets that balance really Did my time update mid-screen? Or did I just blink? I swear it said 2709. Maybe I did just blink. Oh well. We need some credit songs as well. So, but yeah, no, as a, as a retrospective, like, this game actually does hold up fairly well. It's got that wonderful GBA art style, it's so bombastic with the music. Uh, it's got a great selection and variety of Pokémon. The too much water, honestly, is not that bad. There's more water. Oh, it's gonna show me all the Pokémon I caught, it's like, oh, yeah, Reggie's... Dude, it's gonna run out at some point. 
We're already 9 in. We're 12 in. We're 15 in. We're 18 in. Okay. Oh, I see it's turned red. I think there's a Gyarados in there. Um, but yeah, no, this this game definitely holds up fairly well. Um, I, I probably had a similar opinion about the the last one as well. But like, yeah, this was this was a great, good, good fun. Okay, I'm running out of Pokemon I've caught. I'm running out. Oh, we're just going back to Registeel again. We're just looping. We're just looping. Oh, well. I don't know what's with the squares behind them. Sure, okay. I like as well that this, like, idea of wrapping it all up with that bike ride back home. I don't know, there's something sort of nostalgic about it. You know, like, that is your adventure. And, and, these Pokemon games keep it fairly simple, but there's enough of, like, getting mixed in with the whole Team Aqua stuff that, like, it definitely feels like you've done more than just, you know, build up a team and fought a bunch of trainers. It's like, you sort of saved the world in there. But it, does, it doesn't take away the focus too much, especially because I think, uh, you know, they conveniently go to the places that you're also going to. They don't show up a ton. That's your only catch. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've, I've, I've had a great time with this one. I've had a great time with this. Um, so, yeah, I, I would definitely, you know, if you can find a ROM... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't recommend that. If you can find an old cartridge, yeah. Uh, or if Nintendo were very nice and would re-release this one, just like they did with Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal on the 3DS, which you can't buy anymore, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, National Federation of the Blind. Australian Braille Authority. They consulted a lot of blind people on this one. But yeah, oh, the puzzles as well, the secrets, the places you can go to, the environments, just how strikingly different, you know, like, this whole game can look. Um, yeah, no, this game is great. The end. Press A, and we're back to the title screen. Um, now, typically... I do a little bit of a post game. There's a bonus episode. We're back in the town. Check the clock. That's right. Uh, we are past, you know, two hours on stream. But I don't think there's actually a lot left to do. So first of all, your dad is here. Hey, it's been a, it's been a while since I saw you. You look stronger somehow. That's the impression I get. But your old man hasn't given up yet. Oh yes, I have something for you. This came from uh, from someone named Mr. Briny, and it gives you the SS ticket. Hmm, a ticket for a ferry? If I recall, there are ferry ports in Slateport and Lilico. You know, if you have ambition as a trainer, go to the Battle Tower. It should teach you that there is no end to a trainer's chosen path. I better get back to Petalburg Doom. Mom, thanks for looking after the house while I'm away. Oh gosh, I'm gonna get embarrassed on the TV. A red flying Pokemon in various Hoenn locales. The identity of this Pokemon has not yet been determined. We now return- okay. That is very important as well. After beating the game, there was a Pokemon called Lanias flying around, at least if you play Pokemon Sapphire, and a blue Pokemon called Latios if you're flying uh, flying around in uh, Pokemon uh, Ruby. Uh, they're the roaming Pokemon of this game. A dad of yours, he comes home for the first time in years and only talks about his Pokemon. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, now at- oh my gosh, it's kid. Are you going to catch Pokemon? Good luck. Oh my gosh, jeez. Oh, is the, the rival still in the, the the house? I think it's wonderful. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. She hasn't she hasn't turned on the news. Yeah, he is chilling. He's confused. Just playing video games all day. Hey, it's been I was just checking out my Pokédex. There's too many Pokémon I need to cast, but I know this is looking pretty good. Checking this Pokédex in the Archer hit the road again. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, but yeah, no, you can find Latias or Latios on the trail. Um, only one per game. Uh, but yeah, at in any grass, there's like a chance it'll show up. Or it. It's genderless. Um, the strat some people have is you'll like run a Pokemon that's like under level 40, but like you're clearly in a spot where there's not gonna be level. I mean, there's nowhere where there's level 40 Pokemon. Eh, this person's still chilling. <laughs> uh, nice. I need a. 
get Tropius, because we're not going to walk all the way to the place. Um, well, let's uh, move the Pokemon. I don't think you need anything. I think I just need someone who can fly. So, uh, who is not a sweeper? That's right, Magcargo. Sorry, bro. You're getting shafted. Um, but yeah, I don't... Just like in, in Pokemon Gold, where I didn't really want to show, you know, trying to get a... Trying to get the, the three legendary dogs. Uh, I don't really want to show getting a Latias in this game. It's the same kind of struggle of, yeah, you're going to have to, you know, figure out how to, um, you know, just, just farm the grass. And eventually, at some point, you will find, you will indeed find Latias or Latios. Uh, so here, come to the, come to the ferry, flash your ticket. Where would you like to go? Hold on, that's just bonus points, right? Yeah, 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 I was like, they healed me between that. So here we go. Where would you like to go? To Battle Tower. Please board the ferry. And here we go, on the ferry. Where? Oh, yeah, here we are, the Battle Tower. I, I, I was like, oh, don't we have to somewhere else? Gee, there sure are a lot of tough looking trainers here. Uh, but yeah, Battle Tower is a mode I shall probably not mention at all. Like, I, I, I'll talk about it. Uh, the Battle Tower is basically, you know, you'll fight against randomized or sort of randomized teams of Pokemon. Um, and uh, your Pokemon are going to be fixed. Uh, no. Oh yeah, yeah, this guy's effectively asking for a catchphrase so that you'll appear in battle um, for other people, I think. Um, but yeah, you'll... You basically go, oh, welcome to the battle tower. You'll register into a battle room. Uh, you can make a challenge. There are two battle rooms, level 50 and 100. Uh, so basically, your Pokemon will either scale to level 50 or level 100. Excuse me, you don't have three eligible Pokemon. You must have three different Pokemon of level 50 or less. Yeah, this is also what I hate. Eggs and Kyogre in here. Uh, this is what I hate as well. The moment your Pokemon pass level 100, you can't participate in the level, in the level 50 challenge. Um, oh my gosh, I'm getting... Thingy, cough, cough, eh, allergy. Um, so yeah, but the battle, the, this is the only mode, by the way. The battle tower is in its infancy in this game. It definitely develops a lot by the time Pokemon Emerald comes out, when you start having double battle towers, as well as um, some people are going to say, like, mixed battles or swap battles and stuff like that. Uh, there's going to be fancy stuff like that. But yeah, in this game, you effectively just go into the tower, and then you'll... Uh, you know, you'll fight seven trainers. You can save between the trainers, and you're not allowed to spam items. It's like a regular competitive battle. Um, and uh, I think just generally, after you win so often, you'll get given, like, uh, proteins and irons and stuff like that. I think you might also get things like leftovers. Um, there's also some shields and things like that, like medals for your Pokemon when you get, like, so many straight wins. Someone is, like, actually, like... If you receive 56 straight wins in level 100, then a victory ribbon is awarded. The thing is, you gotta save, so you can't cheese it. I like how the battle tower is just like, there, by the way. It's like, oh, okay, sure. This is the other interesting thing as well. Uh, we got uh, one last thing that we need to do, so I'm pretty sure if you go to Lily Cove. say there was a way you could get on the ship, but oh well, oh well. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, this goes between Lily Cove and, and uh, Slate Boy and the Battle Tower, so that's all good. Uh, there's two last things I want to show off. I do want to show off contests, but let's also get the, uh, the actual, like, content part of the game going as well. Um, so, on... Let's go to the Pokenav. Uh, the only real thing that you otherwise have to do after the game is uh, there's a building, there's a tower right here. Uh, I think... Maybe... Uh, I think I'm actually sad. I, I was thinking like, oh, do I need like another... Um, yeah, another... Uh, po like my other HM slave, but no, I think I'm set. I think I'm set. Um, 
this is gonna be a bit of a, like, uh, we'll see how this goes. Also, hi there, kid. These houses are on the water. I was born on water. So head to Pacific Log and see if you can head east. I think you can head east. We'll see. Watch out, there's trainers. Uh, you want to try and watch the north wall. There is a way to leave on the north. There we go, there's a little hole. I'm not too sure, I think the rocks were in the way or something. There's some reason why you can't come here earlier. Good old Ninjask, here we go. Uh, also make sure you've got the Mark Bike. I have not used the Acro Bike at all on stream. Um, but you're gonna need the Mark Bike because they decided to actually make a puzzle here with the Mark Bike. Um, also, I got Ninjask up front for a very particular reason. That's because these Pokemon get real gnarly in terms of, uh, um, in terms of, uh, level. So, here we are, the Sky Pillar. This is basically a giant tower, except it's not actually, like, the most massive tower you've ever seen. But this is gonna get sort of annoying. Um, uh, so you'll ride around, you know, okay, sure. Uh, there are, uh, five, there are six floors. Um, on the first floor, we've got different encounters on floors 1, 3, and 5, and then floors 2 and 4 don't actually have wild encounters, and you'll see why in a moment. Uh, but yeah, on floor 1, we've got Pokemon that are level 47, 48, 50, whatever. These are real gnarly Pokemon, though. We've got Golbats, I don't know, uh, Claydol, as you can see here, you can jump a gun and get a Claydol that's already level 48, jeez. Um, Sableye, uh, Banet, um, or Dusclops if you're playing Ruby and Morwile. Um, actually, I think that's a Pokemon on all the floors, except I think Altaria is on the top floor as well. But, um, yeah, this floor they got up to level 50. Yeah, oh, okay. So your strat is, uh, you've got to be riding fast and then cross the gaps. If you're going any slow, you're not going to cross the gaps. you got to give yourself at least two, two spaces of room. So just make sure you got that, but uh, it's not too bad. Um, here we are, floor three, so let's wander around. Also, oh, you can't fall down too far, because all these floors are safe. Uh, floor three, the Pokemon come up to level 53. So, yeah, they're now, well, they can also be 51, but like, yeah, it's like, that can be higher level than the stuff I've got. And that makes this actually the premier training place. Whoop. Dang it, I, I was like, oh, I don't have to lead up. And you fall off your bike, so make sure you got that on select. Um, it's not too bad though, you've only got two floors of really trying to do this. Oh, and then you know you've goofed. You know you goofed. So, it's not too tricky. And if anything, like, you know, Mount Silver is kind of like a more uh, tumultuous kind of dungeon to go through. This does get annoying with the wild Pokemon, but sure, okay. Um, I guess to some degree, like, the Regis is... It's not post-game, it's just side-game, because you can do it whenever. Alright, okay, here we go, we're gonna hit up at the right time. Oh, no. Always tricky, always tricky. But I think if you can get up there, then you're set. I think. There you go. And now comes the fun part. Did you remember where you need to fall? That's right, you need to go across and then fall back here. Directly in front of this. Ah, yes! What a very fun layout. And then you got some holes so you can fall back down later. Uh, one last floor to go around. The Pokemon on this floor go up to that Altaria can be level 60, but most likely they're going to be like 40, 54 or, 40, or 56. So something like that, but yeah. Uh, this is the strongest part of the game, I guess, because this is the post-game dungeon. It's just kind of here as well, no one even mentions it. Like, Mount Silver is, like, clearly a place to be. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's it's just like, yeah, you know, this is just a, a tower. I think there's more effort put into the, the pre-game, though, even if it is quicker to some degree. Like, I, I feel like my streams have been a little longer than I did on the Pokemon Gold stream, but uh, I mean, we're both at 11 hours. So, and here we are, here we are, right at the top, there he is, right there. The one, the only, Rayquaza. Rayquaza is going to kick my butt so hard, oh my goodness. 
And I'm going to try and catch him in an Ultra Ball. I've got spare Ultra Balls, right? I didn't just climb all the way up to the top and then go, oh, I don't have any Ultra Balls. I got plenty. I got 24. We're safe. Let's fight him. Now, Rayquaza is going to kick your butt so hard you will not know where it belonged. He is level 70. He is crazy high level, and that is expected. He has fly, he has rest, neither of which are really that worrying. He's got outrage, but he's got extreme speed, which is going to be the key thing that he spams and annoys you with. Extreme speed is a incredibly high power move that uh, is also plus two priority, which means it is faster than a lot of your own moves. Now the speed boost is gonna help me, but uh, listen, I, I got, I got time to, I'm not using my money on anything else in this let's play, so, might as well. I need to try dressing, cool. Um, but yeah, Outrage isn't too bad, but, yeah, it's just the fact that he's gonna spam rest. You probably just wanted to, like, oh boy. Oh, that's actually gonna catch me out as well. So let's get the baton pass and let's, uh, Get back to Riff Raff, you could probably tank it a bit better. Uh, and he's Dragon Flying type, so... Pfft, missed anyways. Um, he's Dragon Flying type, so uh, Ancient Power is a fair attack, but Extreme Speed is gonna beat my speed buffs any day. Shouldn't be too bad though, but yeah, he's got he's got crazy high stats. What's his, uh, what's his stats at? Um, let's not kill him though. That is a good amount. That is a very good amount to be at. But it's probably going to rest, and then I'm just going to... And I have to run the run the odds. But we'll see. Uh, his base stats are... He has 105 HP, 150 attack, 90 defense, 150 special attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just going to spam rest. It's going to happen. Um, I could probably use uh, Ancient Power again, though. Uh, and then... Yeah, 90 special defense and 95 speed. He's not too fast, but it is like a very like well-rounded like set of stats. That is, yeah, that's a good amount of damage. Jeez. Why is Baton Pass getting so much use? I can tell, I tell you, Baton Pass is great. Perhaps this is an easier catch than I thought. <laughs> that was like a no effort, like just, oh. Oh, I love you, Baton Pass. I love you, Baton Pass. And there you go. That is Rayquaza. That's that's it. That is actually, in in my eyes, I think that is everything in the game really to show off. The only thing I think I can you can do is uh, the contest. So let's have a go. Let's have a crack at the contest, and uh, it'll be funny. We'll see. So I, someone's probably gonna you know maybe a more casual. A uh, stream that's not, you know, moving on to other games. Uh, you can see up the top there's four tabs. We've got the regular stats, we've got those, you know, the skills, the stats there. Technically, this is the stats, and this has the, well, I guess ability is not a skill. Uh, and then you got their moves, and then the moves again. This is the contest moves. It's the same thing as the regular moves. It's got PP for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, but you can see, instead of a power and accuracy, it's appeal and jam. And on top of that, the description will read something kind of interesting. Like, all of these moves do do something kind of interesting as well. It's been 20 years, or maybe 10, because it was in the remake. But it's been ages since I've even thought of these, because only in this game and Emerald were contests a thing. These special effects on moves you know, they, they fall into five different types. We've got Beauty, Cool, Smart, Cute, and I think there's, um, uh, like, Strong, the other one? Tough, that's what it is. Um, I like how these are the exact same move as well. That's fun. Holy snap, I actually have a setup. Maybe. Let's get Grumpig in on the action. Yeah. So you want to head over here. This is the, uh... The one that you burst onto the scene. Very awkwardly, you'll pass the contest hall for the harder ranks. But yeah. Oh, sorry, Fernand Turf is the one you go to. Okay, sorry. <laughs> wrong one, wrong one. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'll, you'll go through 
so how, how the contest works is that uh, each Pokemon uh, that you have uh, needs to have the earlier medals. And the earlier medals, you have to go through each of the four ranked contests. But they all sort of play the same. He said Falaba, not Lavaridge. I'm an idiot again. Falaba is... Sorry, Verdant Turf, sorry. Not Lavaridge. I was at Falaba. <laughs> um, yeah, it is kind of weird. They're like, you gotta go all the way here. There you go. Normal rank, not super rank. Uh, so you go t from here, then you go to Falaba, then you go to Slate Point, and then you go to Lily Cove for your last rank. Um, why it can't all be in one place, I don't know, but... Yeah, you can get a contest pass. There you go. And a Pokemon with a contest pass, yeah. So basically, uh, there are four Pokemon in the contest. There's a primary scoring, uh, which I'm gonna have to kind of wing. Um, and then there's a secondary scoring. The secondary mode is the fun part. Um, so let's do, uh, oh gosh, I wasn't even paying attention, first of all. Uh, so first of all, let's, let's prep this. So Rebox here has, uh, Smart. So I want to enter him into the Smart contest. If you use moves that aren't the type of the contest you go into, uh, I think you lose a heart every time you use one. Um, sometimes it might, you might need it for the effect, but generally, you know, like, to have the easiest time, just have four moves that all line up in the same category. Um, so there's something like that. Uh, then on top of that, I believe, off the top of my head, when we go to our berries, you'll notice that, uh, yeah, we've got different berries, uh, for the... For spicy, dry, sweet, bitter, and sour. Conveniently, the color of the category, you saw uh, the smart was green, just so happens to line up with these five berries in particular. Uh, so that's your kind of reference for like, oh, okay, sour is actually the stat I want to thing uh, to, to go for. Now, obviously, later berries just like in all over the place. Um, generally, I guess if you want to you know, mix up your, or, you know, your Pokemon and have them in every contest. You probably want, like, Citrus and Person Berries, um, going at it. Uh, you want to go to one of these, uh, spinning machines. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, this one's the one with friends, because you got to deal with, like, someone, yeah, I didn't, okay, nope, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna tell me how to do this. I'm pretty sure I did this before, but, yeah. He's gonna throw in his own berry, and it's kind of sort of gonna, you know, throw you off, but let's go on with a raw berry, because I do want a smart Pokemon. And he's throwing in that one, so okay. Now I'm just gonna hit A when, uh, the target goes over the right thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did this before, and I didn't miss, but, like, I couldn't line it up perfectly. Getting good at this. Oh, yeah, we're doing okay. Yeah, I mean, eleven. That's all right. So the faster the the the, be the spinner goes, the higher level and feel your pokey block is. You can obviously make more, and then you go to your pokey block case, find the pokey block that you've got, and you give it to your one Pokemon that you want. I don't know if the nature actually plays a part of this. Maybe it does. Look at him, he ate it up. That's how it works, right? And then you can see his smart goes up a little bit. This stat, depending on how high that stat is, is the preliminary stage of the contest. That is why the preliminary stage is a bit... Uh, okay, because it's literally, let's have a look at your Pokemon, and it's just... It's just a stat check. Um, so if you want an easy time, make sure that stat is actually okay. You'll always be number four, you'll never be anyone else. Um, but the second stage is where all the fun of the contest comes in, so... Hello! We're just getting started with a normal rank Pokemon Smart Contest. The participating trainers and their Pokemon are as follows. Raymond's Ninda! The more hearts, the better. You're probably gonna see, like, two hearts on mine. Grant Smish! I like Smish. I want him to win. Sydney's Wurrus! Bino's Rebox! <laughs> oh my goodness. 
We've just seen the four Pokemon contestants. Now it's time for primary judging. The audience will vote on their favorite Pokemon contestants. Without any further ado, let the voting begin. And they all just turn to the side because that's how this works. Voting is now complete. While the votes are being tallied, let's move on to secondary judging. The second stage of judging is the much anticipated appeal time. May the contestants amaze us with superb appeals of dazzling moves. Let's hear a little enthusiasm. Let's appeal. Now, this is such a cool mode. It might be broken. There may be like an actual strat. But basically, uh, you're going last and you got to pick a move. Now, your moves have an appeal and a jam. What the appeal does is that it means, oh, I will get two hearts for using this. Um, and uh, Jam will actually, uh, you know, take off hearts from people before you. Since I'm last, this is a actually really nice move because it will take hearts off of everyone above me. Um, but then some of these are like, yeah, it scrambles the order of the kills on the next turn. If I perform first, this actually does, it gives me more stuff, even if it's cool actually more worthwhile if I am first. Uh, you can also do this to avoid being startled because some of the moves are like, oh, you know, they'll startle people or they'll, you know, set the order. It's the idea of like pushing the odds in your favor, but it is fairly luck based. So let's kick in with a, a psychic. Everyone gets to use their moves in the order top down. Uh, you'll see them doing all right. And then he'll go, oh, he looks at him unexpectedly. The smartness went over great. Now this is the thing as well, when you, yeah, so, when you use the move of the same type, the expected type, there you go, so this startled the Ninda, Ninda is like, oh, I'm crying, that, that killed him off. Um, now Sonic isn't the right type, so it's ignored, but you saw that it had, like, appeal, and it was like one out of five. Trying to line up for all five is, uh, you know, or being the fifth one, is a very, uh, important thing to get to as well. And here I go, I'm coming in with my good old Psychic. This is... This is, <laughs> this is destructive as, jeez. Also, you get told off using the same move two turns in a row, so don't. You get five turns. But it's such a fun... You know... Oh, I got ignored anyways. Rip. Still, I'm, I'm coming out on top. Now, depending on how good the last round is, the order shifts, and it's uh, top down. So whoever's first, you get a freebie, or you get to be startled by everyone underneath you. Because that seemed to be the only thing everyone did on that last turn. But yeah, oh, it's such a good move. Oh, oh, good turn. Now the coolness isn't great, so the applause goes down, sure, and I don't get a bonus heart. But I did get six hearts just then. We'll see what happens here. We'll see what happens. But yeah, this is so fun. Also, yeah, it's in the 3DS version. Oh, it, it's ruined the people. It's ruined the people underneath. So Whereas here doesn't get to do his thing. And he gets goofed. Uh, your hearts are banked every turn. Um, so even though I might lose a heart here, it's like, yeah, I'm going to leave the, the round with five. And now my, my bio goes up a fair bit, so... I'm still going to be top. Uh, I could, in theory, uh, show Shockwave, but yeah, you're going to see that this is sort of going to hurt. Because it is the same move two turns in a row. It's not the worst, though, given that, you know, going first means it gets six hearts, and then I think you lose, like, two or three. Yeah, okay. But still, I, I, I'll use them four. It's all right. Oh, this is going to hurt real bad, isn't it? Oh, that's painful. That is painful. See, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, you go first, you're going to get a bit copped out, but... Yeah. But no, this game is great. This game is... It's got a lot of stuff, and it's definitely worth the play. Um, should you... Should you play it in the same way as me? No, don't use the same team as me, because my team is, like... It was a bit funky. I'm relying on Baton Pass, and it, 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 it working okay in the end. Oh, I'm gonna be so destroyed on this one. Oh. You know what, I can do the exact same thing to him again. Rip Screech, I do miss him. Yeah, <laughs> there goes my bar. Going back down. Well. 
Let's, uh... Let's get him with the Psychic. If I can't be the best, I can so- Oh wait, I'm top. Never mind. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. It messed up. It messed up. I should have scrambled the order for the next turn. We'll see what goes on. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see how this works. Oh, I'm just gonna get destroyed. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting destroyed so hard. Yeah, this is a bit, um, a little bit luck based. Like, yeah, I, I wouldn't actively go out of my way to, like, try and do this on stream. Um, and on top of that, like, well, to, to try and, you know, hit the master rank. Because one, it is sort of the same thing the whole time. Uh, well, I yeah, could do anything, but... Let's go with the Calm Mind and let's see if I just so happen to get the... Get the glory of the appeal. So now, okay, so it's on four. If Smish gets it, then darn. But otherwise, yeah, sure. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day as well, your prize is just... Your Pokemon has a medal on him. Uh, you could definitely flex by having all five medals on your Pokemon. Oh. Disappointed. Dude, this this is painful because this was the exact thing I was trying to avoid. And then worse oh I had a good turn. I had a good turn. I was uh sub pop I was doing this contest just as a a finale, just as a last thing. But I apparently suck at the contest. So, uh, yeah, I came last. I think everyone lost all their hearts, just constantly. That's it for judging. This concludes the judging. Now all that remains is the winner. So, it's a combination of how much your points were at the beginning, which clearly you can see I didn't have it, and also no one got hearts except for Ninda here. Who's clearly won it. So... That's right, dead last. I lost to Smish. I lost to Smish. Oh well, everyone hates Raymond. So yeah, so if you win the, the stage, you get a medal, you can go on to the next one, and then yeah, you get one medal at the end. You're winning, so. That's it, that's pretty much the game. I don't think there's, oh, and you get to do an interview at the end, so you get to basically uh, vent. Briefly, how would you describe, uh, uh, do I have terrible? I have tentacruel. Tentacruel works. I mean, I know a glitch on how to always win. Ooh, a glitch, you say? How do you do it? You're not telling me- Ah. Oh. Pretty please, when he's smart, what do you- <laughs> What do you think? Uh... Smart as in, uh... Nope. <laughs> I see, so that's how you imagine the concept of smart to be. PK? PK. Okay. So anyway, so this story might make it on television. Okay, okay. So how do you do it? How do you do your... Your, uh... You're cheating. Self-destruct? Oh, is that, because uh, that, uh, like, hits everyone, how does that, yeah, what does self-destruct do in contests? Do I have a Pokemon with self-destruct? No, I probably don't. I could catch a Geodude. Uh, self-destruct in contest. Ah, it gives you eight appeal, no jam, but you can't do anything for the rest of the contest. Uh, I accidentally did it once and got a lot of hearts. Yeah, you get eight hearts. It does mean you're you're immune to everything for the rest of the thing, right? Or do you, can you still get like jammed from someone else? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well. Uh the uh I believe um fourth gen had its own like was it fourth gen or 
Yeah, fourth gen had its own like contest, but yeah, it was um you're not immune? Okay, so you're still gonna kinda wing it, but granted, last move gives you eight. That's not too bad for you know throwing it in there at the end. Um but yeah, uh, yeah, fourth gen has its own contest and it does have the categories. Um, but it does play a little differently, uh, because, um, you don't do your attacks, necessarily, you instead do, um, like, a. Uh... Actually, do you do attacks? Ah, oh, it's been forever since I played Force Train, I can't remember. I remember you, you did a dancing game, and a dress-up game. I used to think that was the contest, but actually I think it's got some other bit that does rely on your moves. I sort of took it to the next level, but I didn't think it was as fun in 4th Gen, we'll just say that. Um, but I think that is actually it! That's everything with Pokémon Sapphire. I've given a bit of a retrospective, we've gotten 27 Pokémon and called it a day. But granted, you know, like, hold on, scroll down to the bottom, scroll down to the very bottom, you know. Like, apart from Latias, who is just not that fun to find on stream, and I'm just gonna throw a Master Ball. You know, I got Kyogre, I got Rayquaza, we got the three Regis. Um, I'm very certain, like, you know, Grudon's here, uh, Latias and Latios are just chilling here, and then, you know... We got mostly, you know, you've seen most of the Pokémon in this game. I can't think of any actual, like, third gens, apart from some of the version exclusives that I haven't seen. Um, but I've mentioned them, and, uh, yeah, no, I think that's it. Well, time to go Pokemon Black and White. We're skipping Diamond and Pearl, we're just going straight to Black and White. I, I've got a few games I would like to play, so I, I won't ever rule out playing the sequels, but I'll definitely say, um, that there's, uh, you know, we've got a, a few games, a few games to go. Uh, last thing before I leave, I'm gonna see if I can waste my money on the on the casino. This is this is the peak. This is exactly what we do. I feel like I grabbed a lucky one. Thanks for the follow, Bob. Did I ever show? I didn't show what happens when you get. So there's the uh, lightning bolts in the casino here. Um, you see the bar at the top. If you get enough lightning bolts, you enter a bonus mode. I don't know if I'm gonna stick around for long enough. Or even get it. I know the game gets sort of generous with you. Like, if you spam... Uh, do you know why I hate Pokemon Pearl and Diamond? Is it because it takes too long? Like, everything is so slow. Because everything is sort of slow in that game. Exactly getting the lightning bolts though. I'm pretty sure it says here that like, yeah, so low tads give you six coins, which is not much. Uh, the cherries will give you two, four, okay. Uh, the lightning bolts, you want the power and then it gives you three as well. Uh, anything else though, you want to get the sevens. I like how it says like regional, regional bonus. There you go, that's a four. Uh, no, because in the new version they, uh, they just said Pokemon Brilliant Paul, Brilliant Diamond. Oh, yeah, 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 while we're at it as well, let me just mention. So the 3DS Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and really all the other remakes apart from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, are spectacular expansions upon what these original games were about. So if you have a 3DS, don't feel like you're missing, or sorry, if you play the old ROM, there is a certain degree of like, there's something spectacular in the the remakes that, you know, I'm not saying that like, you play these old versions and you're missing out. They're different games, but there's something great about the remakes. Diamond and Pearl, the remake that came out in 2021 is incredibly by the books. It is so verbatim the same game, I think it even contains some of the same bugs. Like, they just re-implemented the bugs. And I believe it runs on the Unity engine, like, they're not reusing code, I think they're just looking at the implementation, they just took the same thing and threw it in there. Um, 
but it is so verbatim. I, I have not played it personally, so I'm not gonna judge the chibi art style right away. But I will say that, like, mm, I sort of expected a game to be in the style of the current Pokemon games, and instead, it stands out as its own thing. Um, with its own drawn 3D models as well, but it also sort of doesn't do anything more. There's like, when you play Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, you're gonna notice, hey, you know, there's much more fully detailed character sprites because that's what they did in X and Y, and that's what they're gonna do in this one. And also the whole world is in 3D and stuff like that. Uh, Shining Diamond, Shining Pearl, Brilliant Diamond. Yeah, no, there's not much. Uh, all the dialogue is exactly the same. The music is sort of hits the same cues. Um, there are no extra areas. There are no extra Pokemon, really. I think... Do you have the ability to bring in other Pokemon that aren't in the Sinnoh decks, or is it kind of just stuck with that? I don't think you can bring in anything later than Diamond Pearl. I'm just curious whether you can bring in, uh, you know, like, Kyogre. It's clearly not in that game. Uh, see, this is why I hate the new game with a passion. I mean, I don't exactly hate it, but it's more just like I haven't bought it. Like, I, I didn't pay for it, and I haven't really played it, and it doesn't interest me, because I did play the original, and given that it doesn't contain more content, or really a revitalized version of the same content, because I know I said that about Metro Prime, and it's literally exactly the same board. Um, or exactly the same game as the original version, but, like, it's not exactly that I'm seeking new stuff, but that, like, do I have the motivation to play it again when there isn't new stuff? Metroid Prime is a game that tickles that fancy for me. Diamond and Pearl, I'm like, ah, I can just pull out Diamond and Pearl at any point. And on top of that, you are competing with the world of internet piracy. So, whether that works out, I don't know. I was expecting to get more of the lightning bolts. This sure takes its time. There's got to be an easier way to gamble the lightning bolts, right? On top of that, like, I'm not winning a ton, am I? I don't remember the slots being this aggressive. <laughs> like, anytime you win, it's like, chump change. The low tads only give you one, like, net spin more than you had already. The lightning bolts give you three, so it's effectively a replay. The replays are replays. The zoom rolls are just not showing up. Still playing Pokemon Red because I cannot get past the Elite Four. Uh, the trick with Pokemon Red is spam the special stat. Um, like, figure out, well, the, the kind of rough part about Pokemon Red and Blue is that you can't refight trainers. And that just means that, awkwardly, the only way to gain levels is to really chill on the victory road for a long time. Um, but yeah, there are some, I would say, observe the stats of your Pokemon. That seems to be the actual key way of making it through that game. Um, and especially the Elite Four. Uh, also, spam... I don't know, is, is it fair to, to say, use the glitch of uh, critical hit chance being just broken. It's, it's not exactly a glitch, it's just poor design. Um, who spent hours on Pokemon? Me. I spent hours on it as a kid. <laughs> it's been ages now. We're getting to that point where it's like, I am old. I played the original Pokemon like 25 years ago. <laughs> and like, all that knowledge is seeping away from me. I have to keep looking up, uh, I have to keep looking up like, type charts and stuff like that. Um, but there is stuff, like, I do remember a fair bit about, like, first and second gen, even today, whereas third gen is like, eh, I'm sort of having to remind myself a bit more, um, about how it works. Uh, but that being said, like, you know, that's what these streams are. They're a sort of idea of me getting back into it, um, not exactly to remember it forever, but to at least to have another go at it. 550 years old, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The moment I say, like, I'm older than 25, it's like, ugh. <laughs> I'm ancient. I, I mentioned earlier as well, I'm like, I'm older than, like, half of the Formula One drivers on the grid now. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah. I didn't even mention, I, I, I was like, oh, I, I, I was getting into the Elite Four, but I just wanted to mention that my boy Danny Rick 
Daniel Ricardo is back in at Alpha Tower. I, I was talking about Nick DeVries getting fired. Um, but yeah, Dan Daniel Ricardo, he's back in. He's driving again this season. I'm happy. We've got two Australians on the grid. That's more than the Americans and the Canadians. And uh, technically the Dutch now. Whoop. Before I defeat the Elite Four, I try to get every legendary. I think it's just the three in, in that game, yeah. The three birds. You can actually do... Okay, real... Well, in that case, you're good. You're set, because the only other legendary in first gen is Mewtwo, which is only available after you beat the league. Here's a fun fact with uh, Pokemon first gen, by the way. You can catch all but... I think four Pokemon before... after three gyms. So if you ever do a Professor Oak challenge... Actually, you're wrong. We're not counting Mew. We're not counting Mew. That doesn't count. Yeah, we're not counting Mew. This you can't normally get him. You gotta, you gotta do some fancy stuff if you want to get that. But yeah, no, you can get all but four Pokemon in, in Pokemon Red and Blue, uh, like at, without trades and without Rainbow Pass. But like, there's only four Pokemon that you can't get before three badges. Uh, that it hard requires you to fight Koga and get Surf as your third badge. Uh, but like, yeah, the game is sort of designed around letting you do that. It's bizarre. It's it's bizarrely open. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be winning the slots anymore. So um, yeah, final final thing. I got 69 coins. I think that's a good place to end it. Dude, it's kind of annoying. You go back to the machine and your lightning is gone. But legit, I just burnt like 300 coins and so much, like, time just then. Uh, but yeah, no, I've I've had a great time playing Pokemon Sapphire. Uh, I've had... it was fun having a bit of a wacky team going on. Um, 28 hours seems a bit on the shorter end as well. Um, isn't that for, like, a JRPG, but... no, oh, this was a smooth... Oh, snap, I forgot to... Fine, trick house. There's one more trick house. Do I need any, uh... As an I, I, I was stalling for a fair bit, I forgot. There's one more trick house level. I'll never get this cycling right, though. I'll never get it right. Uh, I always forget about the Psychic Gym, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of there, and honestly, like, it is one of the harder gyms of the game. It is pretty mean. Um, the puzzle is kind of weird. Alright, so after defeating the League, we have one last Trick Room. Trick House Trick Room. Oh my gosh, where was it? Did I spot it? I didn't spot it, which means it must have been on screen at some- it was the cushion. Are those laughable? I used to always have trouble with the Alakazams. But then, like, I just had to fast a Pokemon at some point, and then, you know, it was all good. Uh, oh boy, it's a sliding room. You've been slugging through the Trick House Challenge 2. Well, actually, it's the Trick House Challenge 8, but sure. Leroy Jenkins. Uh, oh boy. Okay, sure. Let's get Riff Raff out. That's when I was given all these, you know, this, this game is all done. And then, I forgot. One last, one last trick house. For old time's sake. There's only three trainers in here as well, so it's not like it's really going to be that tough. Uh... Oh, there's so many poke- Oh, no, it's a HM slave. It's a HM slave. It's fine. <laughs> uh, da da da. It's got Starmie, which I'm going up against with a rock type. I will say, maybe having a grass type would make this game a lot easier, though. Like, when they say, oh, too much water, or an electric type. 
Maybe that was why I had, like, more trouble in the middle of the game. Like, I know I was under level by the end, and technically that's of my own volition, but, like, yeah, I'm thinking, like, yeah, if you have an electric type or a grass type, you have a very consistent way of taking out water types. And there are, indeed, a lot of water types, and when it's not water types, it's ground or rock types. There seems to be a lot of that going on in the game anyways. Whew. Good stuff. I do like Armaldo, though. He's very fun. And even, like, using um, Ninjask as a, as a baton pass, like, I feel like I managed to get every Pokemon in my party, um, try to get Magikarp as quick as possible. The Magikarp percent. Not many trainers have made it this far. Technically, if you've gotten fewer badges, does the door somehow lead into a different, like, trick house? Or is it, like... Like, I guess it works. Uh, I guess I can get the Shadow Ball, the old Shadow Ball. Yeah, Magikarp's cool. Um, he does have high attack, though. So, you have to watch out in first-gen Pokémon when, like, the, the physical special split is, like, not that very balanced. Do you know the two useless Pokémon Magikarp? You know, I forgot his name, but I like those two. Um, Dunsparce? Dunsparce is pretty, pretty, you know, worthless. But he's fine. I will say, I think I still dodged a bullet on, like, using, um, uh, Shedinja on my team. I think Cast Form is, like, actually fun. I never used- I didn't use Thunder in that Elite Four, though. The other one looks like Magikarp. Like a newer one? Basculin? It reminds me of Basculin in newer games. Gosh, I am so tired of these cool trainers spamming full restores. Like, I know I used it a bajillion times in the... I think it's night. Oh, Phoebus! I think I mentioned Phoebus, but yeah, I mean, I'll just re-mention it. There is one spot, one route in this game, depending on your secret ID, the magic number that's generated under the hood for your game, uh, you'll, there'll be six or four, I think it's six, random spots of water in that one route that has a 10% chance of spawning Phoebus. So, like, it's not a very consistent way of knowing where those uh, bits of water are, and then I think that water resets on every day, as in the spots change. So, it's one of, like, the... it, it probably is the rarest Pokémon. I need to buy that quick. <laughs> Bye! See ya, my man. Um, but yeah, it's probably one of the rarest Pokemon in this game because of how bizarre, like, that find rate is. Um, I think it's that rare. And then, yeah, to evolve it, you have to feed it, uh, you know, beauty poffins. Uh, I don't think I'm doing this right at all. Oh, wait, I am. But I have to get to... Oh, I'll just skip that trainer. That trainer has a uh, lair on and a manek trick. We'll just say that. No! There we go. Write the secret code here. Yes! Oh, I didn't... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Bro, I'm like half asleep. <laughs> I usually don't run my streams for three hours, and then I was like, eh, you know, I don't have enough for, like, a bonus stream, really. Like, once I beat the league at, like, two and a half hours, I was like, yeah, I might as well just get the, the well, two hours fifteen. I'm like, yeah, I might as well just get all the extra stuff now. There we go. A scroll, the Elder Scroll, if you will. Or well, the scroll's trademark, if I'm Mo Mojang. I used to always say Mojang, but uh, should it be Mo Yang? Who knows? Trick Master, I love. I do love the Trick Master. This is a fun, like, extra thing as well. And uh, uh, just, yeah, bonus points. All the side content in this game is what makes it so much better than, you know, second and first gen. Um, I'm not saying it's fully better than second and first, well, maybe first gen. I think we can all say that. What should I do? My fountain of ideas for tricks has run dry. Perhaps it's time I toured the country on a quest to devise new tricks. I hate to admit defeat, but you have bested me. Still, you have must have been reeled in by my recruitment for you to visit me again and again. Yes, you must have. But that's nothing to do with my losing and recognition of the friendship between you, the driven, and the genius that is myself. I demand that you take this keepsake and give you a ten. 
You can put it in your house. I'm leaving on a journey of discovery, a quest in search of new tricks. I wish that you will one day visit and entertain me again. And now, farewell. And that is, perhaps, the most fitting way to say goodbye to this game. I think I've, <laughs> I've gambled, I've contested, I've contested with my smarts. I've shown off Rayquaza. I think that's it. I think we're all good. There's no more Pokemon Sapphire left. Let's do one last save and call it a stream. So I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you did indeed watch this whole stream, uh, thank you very much. And if you missed any of this stream, do not play Diamond or Paul. I will not play Paul. We're not doing it. I do like Diamond, but I'm not, I'm not going to play the remakes. We play the originals. No, I know what's going to happen next. I'm not playing it. It's not the next game. I can guarantee that. So, yeah. If you missed any part of this stream or you missed the other 10 streams before because this is stream 11, um, yeah, just check my YouTube channel. All the VODs are there uh, in full, slightly higher than Twitch quality. Um, and, uh, yeah, if, and, yeah, if you want to see that Pokemon Gold stream from, like, two years ago or multiple streams, um, yeah, check that out. There's a playlist. You can just see the whole thing and just watch the whole thing like that. So, that's all good. Um... And yeah, if you want to follow on Twitch, I'll stream this time next week. Same, so 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard, where I'll be playing some other weird game from my childhood. What will it be? I've told some people already. I think I've told the stream already. So, okay, who knows. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, eat your greens. Don't stay up too late like I have. See ya.